Go ahead. Terrific. All right. So uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Town of Aurora Committee of Adjustment meeting, our first for uh, 2023. Happy New Year to all. Uh, before I, or I'll call the meeting to order. And uh, before we start, I'll um, go through a uh, land acknowledgement. The Town of Aurora acknowledges that the Ashinaabe lands on which we live and work are the traditional and treaty number 20 territories of the Chippewas of Georgina Island, as well as many other nations whose presence here continues to this day. As the closest First Nation community to Aurora, we recognize the special relationship the Chippewas have with the lands and the waters of this territory. They are the water protectors and environmental stewards of, this la of these lands and as a municipality, we join them in these responsibilities. We further acknowledge that Aurora is part of the treaty lands of the Mississaugas and the Chippewas, uh, recognized through treaty number 13, as well as the Williams treaties of 1923. A shared understanding of the rich cultural heritage that has existed for centuries and how our collective past brought us to where we are today will help us walk together into a better future. So <clears throat> I will start by introducing um, members, uh, committee members and staff. I am the committee chair. My name is Tom Plamondon. And the remaining members are as follows. Daniel Lajeunesse is our vice chair. Steve D'Angeli, Linda Duringer, and David Mango are the remaining members of the committee. The secretary treasurer is Peter Fan. Uh, the planner with us this evening is Rosanna Punat. The council committee coordinator is Linda Botas, and the deputy town clerk is Jacqueline Grossi. This public meeting is being audio and video recorded. It is being conducted virtually through the use of Zoom technology. Your name, address, comments, and any other personal information are being recorded according to the Municipal Act and the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. This will help our town clerk prepare accurate minutes and to create a record that is available to the general public, including on the town's website. Questions about this collection should be directed to the town clerk. Please be advised that the reports being considered tonight are available on the town of Aurora website and through staff at the town's planning department. Should you wish to receive notification of any of the decisions of tonight's meeting, please complete the appropriate uh, form available through town staff. Owners and agents will automatically be notified. For each application that will be considered tonight, the following process will occur. Mm -hmm. I will briefly outline the purpose of the application or applications, and then the applicant or agent will then be given an opportunity to make a presentation. However, one is not required. It is the applicant's decision whether they wish to speak or let the application proceed on the merits on, of the information as received. Presentations and deputations are limited to five minutes as much as possible. Following any initial comments from the applicant, I will invite members of the public who have an interest in the application to come forward to address the committee. Those members of the public who wish to speak must clearly state their name and address and must provide this information to the secretary treasurer. Should you wish to receive a copy of the notice of decision, please again complete the appropriate form available through the secretary treasurer. Members of the public are reminded that text comments are not permitted during the meeting and they will not be noted in any manner at any time. Each individual may speak only once on an issue and once discussion has commenced in respect of a motion, no further presentations shall be made. If you require any technical assistance with your presentation, please let me know. If you wish to speak and are currently following uh, this meeting on the YouTube feed, you will need to turn this feed off and join the meeting uh, as there is uh, a live meeting, as there is a slight lag between the YouTube feed and the live feed. Please ensure that all questions and or comments are directed through me as the chair. 
and, and if relevant, I will uh, request the appropriate person respond. It should be noted that the applicant will be given the opportunity to respond to any question or comment should the committee feel that it is appropriate. So with that, I will look to the committee then for um, a motion to approve the agenda. Uh, Daniel, go right ahead, thank you. Thank you, through you the chair, I move that we approve the agenda as circulated for this January 12th, 2023. Uh, thank you very much. Seconder, please. Linda, thank you. Calling the question. All in favor of the agenda being approved. Thank you. That carries. Uh, I'll ask members of the committee, are there any declarations of pecuniary interest or general nature thereof? Uh, seeing all heads nodding, no, thank you. So uh, I'll look then to uh, the committee um, for a uh, approval of the minutes of the meeting held on December the 8th, uh, being uh, meeting number 22-12. And this will have to come from one of the members who was at the meeting. Uh, David? Uh, your mic uh, is uh, not live there. Sorry about that. Uh, through the chair, I move that the uh, committee of adjustment minutes from meeting number 22-12 12 be approved as circulated. Thank, uh, thank you very much. Seconder, please. Linda, calling the question. All of those in favor of the minutes? Thank you very much. Uh, any abstentions? Terrific, thank you, Steve. Both Steve and I were away for that meeting. Um, moving on then to uh, presentations for this evening. Um, members of the committee, item 6.1 is minor variance 2022-48. This uh, uh, item uh, relates to uh, 15032 Young Street. We have a request uh, to defer this application to a future meeting at the request of the applicant. So I'll ask members of the committee for a motion to defer. Uh, Steve, go right ahead, please. Thank you. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair, I move that with respect to minor variance application 2022-48EU, that this uh, application be deferred to a future meeting uh, to be determined between the applicant and staff. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, look for a seconder, please. Uh, Linda, thank you very much. Call the question, a motion to defer. And that carries. Thank you very much. Uh, very good. So again, now moving forward to uh, 6.2 on the agenda. This is minor variance uh, application uh, MV22-13. Uh, this is for uh, 2352107 uh, Ontario Inc. I'll note that uh, there are related files, uh, SP2009, uh, uh, that's site plan subdivision, 2015-02 uh, and zoning bylaw 2015-05. Uh, in this application, the applicant is requesting relief from the requirements of the town's comprehensive zoning bylaw 6000-17 as amended to facilitate the development of two new drive-through restaurants. Uh, the drive-through restaurants are proposed at the northeast corner of Leslie and the future Melvin Robson Avenue. The following relief is being requested. Uh, a, section 5.4 of the zoning bylaw requires a total of 58 parking spaces for the restaurant uses. The applicant is proposing a total of 52 spaces, therefore requiring a variance of six spaces. The applicant's uh, stated reasons for not complying with the bylaw. Um, and again, this is coming back to us, uh, members of the committee, if we recall, this uh, did come before us uh, in a previous meeting. Uh, and as stated on the application form, uh, after a previous committee of adjustment meeting, we took the comments made by the committee back to our design team, as well as planning staff, and worked on an alternative plan that would provide greater stacking spaces and better mobility within the plan. 
So we note that um, we're only now dealing with uh, a reduction to parking and not stacking uh, issues that uh, were uh, brought to the committee's attention and commented back. Uh, with regards to the general intent of the official plan, uh, in considering the context of the official plan policies, the variances requested are not anticipated to have any negative impacts or non-conformities. And uh, they fulfill the objective of providing ancillary service uses for the area. Staff are of the opinion that the re requested variance meets the general intent of the official plan. Uh, with regards to the general intent of the zoning bylaw, uh, the applicant submitted a parking justification letter prepared by C.F. Crozier and, and Associates dated December the 6th, 2022, which concluded that the proposed parking spaces are adequate. As determined by town uh, transportation staff, uh, the letter provides sufficient evidence that the reduction in parking spaces is not anticipated to result in any negative impacts on the development and the operation of the proposed restaurant, uh, restaurants plurals, nor will there be any negative impacts uh, to the surrounding areas. Uh, the business park, um, as the business park uh, builds out, it is anticipated that the area will become more walkable to accommodate patrons, thus also furthering the need for parking spaces. Therefore, staff are of the opinion that the requested variance meets the general intent of the zoning bylaw. With regards to it uh, being des uh, desirable for the appropriate development of the land, uh, the parking study sufficient, sufficiently demonstrates that the proposed spaces are satisfactory in accommodating the needs of the parking needs of the site. The study has been reviewed by town traffic transportation analyst, and no traffic related concerns have been raised. It is uh, in the opinion of staff that the reduced parking spaces are sufficient to accommodate the proposed restaurants. And with respect uh, to the um, variances uh, being minor in nature, um, in considering the impact and scale of the requested variance, it is considered to be minor in the context of better usal, utilizing the site for the permitted uses. Staff note that the applicant has made significant improvements compared to the previous initial submission. The revised plans provides for sufficient stacking space for both drive-through restaurants and the entrance to the north drive-through has been repositioned to improve the flow of internal and uh, traffic and pedestrian safety. Uh, so staff are of the opinion that the variances are minor in nature. Uh, additional comments received from other departments or agencies. Um, the preliminary zoning review was completed December the 9th, uh, 2022 by the building division. Um, sorry, my screen just jumped here. Uh, engineering division, no uh, uh, comments uh, provided stating no concerns with the proposed development. Operational services, Parks Operational Services, Public Works, Central York Fire Services, York Region, no comments received at the time of writing of the report. Uh, LSRCA, no comments or concerns with the proposed application. Electric Utilities, no concerns. Uh, Ministry of Transportation, no concerns with the proposed minor variance. Uh, there were no written uh, comments received at the time of writing of the reports. I do not believe we have received any uh, since then. Uh, there is an appendix with recommended conditions of approval, uh, and there that being only one. So with that, I'll ask if the uh, applicant is here with us this evening. I believe we are joined uh, this evening by Anna Rita uh, Barbosa. Good evening, Rita. Good evening. Nice to see you yeah, again. Very well, thank you. 
so just for the record, your name and uh, your address, please. Uh, Anna Rita Barbosa, and I'm at 62 Sherburn Drive, Maple, Ontario. And uh, I'm representing Haven. We are in agreement with the report. We did go back and do a lot of work to see how we can reconfigure and make it better. Um, we're actually really happy and um, happier with the plan now. So we thank you for the comments. And um, we did have a bit of constraint. We have the, um, uh, you know, some grading issues, but also an easement on one side. So while we tried to get rid of all of our parking issues, they ended up, um, the freezer from DQ had to be put in as a counted parking, which added three more parking. And then, so we ended up now with a six deficient parking. So we're hoping that um, it's still at just a 10% um, reduction, but all the stacking is in, which ended up is actually one of the most important things for these drive um, facilities as well. Terrific. Um, so, uh, I think we are familiar with uh, the previous layout and um, we have all taken the time, I'm sure, to uh, look at the report. Um, for the record, I don't, I don't believe that there is anyone here from the public who wishes to address the committee tonight from my notes from staff. So with that, um, I'll just turn it over to members of the committee for any comment or question. Steve, see your hand up there, go right ahead. Sure, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, through you. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the applicant. Um, I, I personally think this is a much better design. I think you've addressed, uh, well, you have addressed uh, all of my concerns. I would uh, just note for the record that, um, you know, I, I appreciate the confirmation that the, uh, the turning radius uh, can be, uh, uh, accommodated with respect to the Starbucks drive-through, so uh, I know that was one of our uh, uh, one of our concerns, and that's in the uh, staff report and the, uh, the the material submitted. I'm also a lot more comfortable with the pedestrian walkways being uh, there. They seem to be a further distance away from the, uh, the the pickup windows and the entrances to the building, so uh, I, I I feel a lot more comfortable with the safety aspects there. Um, and with respect to the parking. Um, I don't have the exact figures, but um, I look at uh, other Starbucks in the region, um, Young Street in Aurora, and I, I look at the King Street one, and uh, um, or sorry, King City one, and um, where I, I, I've been there where there, it, there is a deficiency in parking, and I noticed that there is significant uh, additional parking at this location. So um, I, I think there are comparable locations that have significantly less parking that what is being provided here. So um, long story short, uh, once again, thank you for the revisions. I'm comfortable and uh, comfortable with proceeding. Uh, those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Yeah, I do appreciate the fact that uh, we were able to look at, uh, for example, you know, emergency vehicle circulation patterns and uh, the confirmation that, uh, that, that they, can, they can do that. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I spent a little bit more time with that part of it than I probably normally otherwise would. Um, comments as well from, uh, I think David, you had your hand up next. Please go right ahead. Uh, through the chair, uh, just like uh, the other member, uh, just want to thank the applicant uh, for the uh, vehicle uh, movement uh, analysis. Um, uh, you actually addressed your very clear, you addressed my comments and uh, seeing all the radius staining and so on. I say, oh yeah, wow, that's what we wanted. They should have done this area one. <laughs> so you are just my, my concerns. Uh, if you remember, they were my concerns. And the, uh, also regarding parking, I you know, I, I, you know, looking at the report by the transportation consultant about the, you know, <clears throat> the peak demand and so on. Um, and the, you know, considering other studies we've seen before, and also the fact that the town staff also, you know, didn't see any impact. I didn't. I don't think there will be any impact on this. Uh, so I'm okay. And with the pedestrians who will be walking around, uh, I, I see that there will be still room for the drivers to actually see and so on. Good spacing and the, the orientation, the location of the training uh, looks good. 
So I don't have any questions. Just see my comments and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you David. Uh, see Linda's hand up there. Uh, Linda, go right ahead. Uh, thank you, through the chair. Yeah, I just wanted to say the same thing. Really, I'm glad you did this. As soon as I opened it up and looked at it, I was, thank you. That looks so much better. It just makes so much more sense. And I'm glad like the Committee of Adjustment had a you know hand in it. We bid. Thank you for the revisions. And um, I'm, I'm glad we could help with the design and, and good luck. It was, it, it looks good now. It really thank does. you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you, Linda. Daniel? So I don't have a, uh, any questions. I'll just make a, a comment. Well, two comments. First of all, I was not involved in the first time around. I had to miss for uh, a personal reason. Um, however, I did go through the notes. And as the committee member here who, who, uh, who specializes and focuses on uh, transportation outside of, uh, of vehicles, um, I'm very happy to see the, the sidewalks, the crosswalks, uh, the painted crosswalks. Um, there are a number of different locations similar to this throughout the town that does not have sidewalks. So I'm I'm very happy to see that that is uh, that it that it is here that uh, there's a good two meter um, uh, spacing in, in many of these locations, if not larger. Um, so I'm um, I'll, uh, my colleagues have all commented about the vehicles. So I just wanted to call, uh, comment about uh, pedestrians and cyclists, and they seem to be covered. And I appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you. Terrific. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, yes, Steve, uh, follow up. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, just, just a question I forgot to ask. Um, was I reading the plans properly? Is there a community mailbox uh, planned for uh, outside of the Dairy Queen? <laughs> Through you, Mr. Chair. So there is a mailbox that's just going to be for the two locations. So it's just all, all that it's for. It's for both of those buildings. Um, uh, yeah, it's not I, I, the other, anyone else in the community, just those two. See. Yeah. For that clarification, it just seemed like a strange spot for one of those big community mailboxes. Thank you. Uh, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ter terrific. So, and if, if you don't think we pick up on details, there's a we good do. example. <laughs> of how <laughs> thorough this committee can be. <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> Thank you, Steve, for, for noticing that. I appreciate it. You just uh, called me anal, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair. <laughs> <laughs> A term that I don't use <laughs> on a regular basis. All right, uh, seeing no further discussion, I'll ask for a motion on the application. Linda, thank you very much, go right ahead. Thank you, Chair, and through the Chair, I move to approve MV-2022-13-235-2022-13-235-2022-13-235-2022-13-235-2022-13-235-2022-13-235-2022-13-235-2022-13-235-2022-13-235-2022-13-235-2022-13-235-2022-13-235-2022-13-235-2022-13-235
and an independent temperature and odor test report for the Moloch uh, system is uh, attached as Appendix C. The following relief is being requested. A, Section 4.20 of the Zoning Bylaw does not list garbage enclosures as permitted in the front yard. The applicant is proposing a garbage enclosure in the front yard and seeks a variance to recognize it as a permitted sorry, encroachment. The applicant stated reasons for not complying with the zoning bylaw. The property owner would like larger capacity garbage storage and disposal service to be provided by a private company without company vehicles entering uh, property grounds. This calls for concealed um, Moloch storage units to be located in the front yard relative to the primary house location. Uh, further, the property owners uh, like the Moloch system because they can keep garbage slash recycling items underground and it is more sanitary and a better use of space that way. The primary main garage has been repurposed into a gym and they have a car charger in the smaller garage. They are a large family of seven and very often have grandparents and other family members visiting. So they do produce more garbage than a smaller household. They feel that it is important, that it is more sensible, a more sensible solution to keep it away uh, from the garbage and in an enclosed underground uh, can. With regards to the general intent of the official plan, uh, it is noted uh, by the applicant that the height of the enclosures um, can be installed at less than one meter above grade, which can help mo uh, minimize the exposure and overall visibility to the public. Staff also note that there are no sidewalks on Jarvis Avenue uh, with proximity or direct exposure to the garbage enclosures um, not anticipated for uh, pedestrians. It is the planning's opinion, planning staff's opinion, that the proposed variance will not result in any negative impact on the character and streetscape of the existing estate residential neighborhood. And as, uh, and as such, staff are of the opinion that the requested variance meets the general intent of the official plan. With regards to the general intent of the zoning bylaw, the general intent of regulating front yard encro encroachment is to ensure that there is no negative impact to the character um, of an area or streetscape. Uh, the Mollocks are modest in their overall massing, scale, and height, thus resulting in minimal visual obstruction and impact. Staff are of the opinion that the requested variance meets the general intent of the zoning bylaw. With regards to uh, it being considered desirable for the appropriate development of the land, um, the collection will be completed through a private company service. As noted by the applicant, mall garbage is planned to be collected bi-weekly and the collection times will be during regular business hours between 7 a.m. and 6 p.m as determined by town staff, um, town public works staff, sorry. Staff are of the opinion that the requested variance is considered desirable for the appropriate development of the property. With regards to the variance being considered minor in nature, in considering the scale and size of the proposed Mollocks, there is minimal impact resulting from their installation in the front yard. Streetscape will largely remain unaltered as the Mollocks will be positioned behind existing, existing mature trees located on the roadside. And additional landscaping, perennials slash shrubs measuring 1.2 meters or higher will also be planted around the Mollocks. The character of the neighborhood uh, is maintained as the installations will not generate any concerns relating to the overall appearance, massing, and scale. Staff are of the opinion 
that the requested variance is minor in nature. So um, other comments received from other departments or agencies include the following. On December the 7th, 2022, Building Division completed their preliminary zoning review. Uh, Engineering Division, Operational Services Parks, Operational Services Public Works, uh, Central York Fire Services, York Region, all have indicated that they have no comments or concerns with the proposed application. Uh, LSRCA, also provided a um, written confirmation stating no comments or concerns. Electra Utilities, um, again, no objections uh, to the approval of the minor variance. Public correspondence, three written submissions were received at the time of writing of the report. Uh, the written submissions expressed similar concerns uh, to the one uh, to one another and are summarized as follows. Um, they are listed in the staff report with comments uh, immediately uh, adjacent to it, but very briefly, um, the concerns that were expressed relate to the appropriateness of Moloch's uh, that are commercial slash industrial in nature in an estate residential neighborhood. Um, the comments were that um, they are not uh, industrial or commercially sized. Uh, they are uh, designed for residential purposes. Uh, they will be shorter and only slightly wider, a wider version uh, than regularly sized garbage containers. And that the exterior of, of the Moloch's will be wood panel with um, metal trim and uh, matte black plastic lids. Uh, they are to be partially screened and strategically placed uh, to be out of public view. Uh, and they are found to be effective. Uh, they are, fa are found to uh, be able to effectively control temperature uh, within the containers, thereby eliminating the uh, emission of unpleasant odor or resulting in waste leakage. Uh, again, concern was expressed uh, with regards to the location and lack of buffering and screening. Um, those uh, have been addressed in the con initial comment um, with the uh, intent to provide additional screening and the use of existing trees. Um, and uh, of note, staff have also recommended a condition, of, a condition of approval um, be uh, given to ensure the landscaping and screening shown in Appendix B is provided uh, to buffer uh, the containers. There was an overall concern about the aesthetics and the appeal of the property. And again, um, the staff's comment relates to the condition to require the landscaping uh, screening as a condition of approval. Uh, so again, uh, with regards to staff and review of the four tests under the Planning Act, uh, staff are recommending approval uh, subject to the conditions that appear in Appendix A, and there are two conditions there. Um, so with that, I'll turn to uh, the applicant who uh, is joining us this evening, and I believe it's uh, Chris... Uh, Bertotto, if I have that correct. Uh, apologies if, if I don't have that correct. And I believe we're also joined by Seymour Martin, who is a resident who wishes to address the committee. But uh, let me go to the applicant first. Uh, good evening, sir. I'll just ask you to uh, give us your name and your address for the record and uh, just unmute your mic. So I'll just ask you to unmute your mic. So it should appear across the top of your screen and there should be a mic button there with a, a red dot in it. Just touch that and it should go green. Sorry about that. There you go. Can you hear me now? Okay, yeah. thank you. 
Good evening and welcome. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Um, my name is Chris Bertottle from C-Space Architecture. Um, I guess our, our, our office address is 8841 George Bolton Parkway in Caledon, Ontario, although I'm a resident of Aurora myself. Um, we're the architects for this project and we're representing the owners tonight. Um, so yeah, just, just, just a, a brief presentation. Actually, you've seen, you've said a lot of it. Uh, the primary main garage we'd like to emphasize has been repurposed into the gym. They have a car charger in the smaller garage. So uh, the garage spaces are not entirely suitable for waste disposal. They're a large family with family members often visiting. So they anticipate producing a lot more garbage than a smaller household, substantially more anticipated than the three bags per two weeks limit that the municipal service often provides. Um, the owners feel the most sensible solution is to keep it uh, away from the garage and in enclosed underground containers. Garbage and recycling items can be stored underground, which from an environmental standpoint is a cleaner and more effective way for storage and disposal of this volume and waste of waste and recyclables. Uh, so the idea is to minimize or have no street mess or pests uh, present at all. The system has been proven as, as you see in the appendix uh, via extensive studies to be able to effectively control temperature within the containers thereby eliminating the emission of unpleasant odors or resulting in any waste leakage. Um, so yeah, the goal again is to dispose of it in a clean and environmentally friendly way than a typical domestic pickup strategy. And uh, the lot is large, a lot of ample front lot frontage and mature vegetation along the lot lines of the property. So the proposed Moloks are to be located in the front yard. Uh, they will be concealed largely from the south and southwest street views by mature trees and a landscape berm. Um, we're also proposing a landscape buffer and we've modified our drawings since uh, deferring last month to produce a more substantial buffer uh, consisting of tall shrubs and hedges uh, layered uh, as per the conditions that you've, um, you've mentioned already. Um, this is in combination with the hardscape in form of masonry pillars and a gate, which will also offer substantial screening from the street view. Um, the only visual and utility truck access to these bins will be facing south from within the driveway. So the pickup truck enters the driveway, access to this, the bins laterally, not from the street, uh, before reaching the gates, then, then exits backwards and leaves. Um, the Moloks, as currently proposed, are 1.3 meters in diameter, and they're considerably smaller than the standard 1.8 meter bins that you find in commercial scenarios, which I think is a, is a concern among neighbors. And they're only about 6 to 12 inches wider than conventional garbage bins that are left outside for pickup. As well, the height above the grade at the top of the lid has been adjusted over the last month so that it will extrude no more than 1 meter above grade. Um, we understand that a condition of approvals for the owner to provide and maintain appropriate screening to screen the proposed Moloks to the satisfaction of the Director of Planning and Development Services or designate. The largest emphasis is this point. Um, the owners would like to make it very clear that they are aware of the concerns of other neighbors and are absolutely dedicated to working with the Director of Planning and the other interested parties to ensure that this work will be executed in extremely discreet fashion that the screening is satisfactory. The result is not an eyesore, which appears to be the focal point of concern among neighbors. The goal of this method is, is to ultimately come across as maybe an improved version of, of a domestic pickup strategy and to maintain the look of the entire neighborhood where you do have a lot of landscaping, uh, gates at the front, and uh, we want this to appear no different and we'll work with you as much as possible to uh, make this happen. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Chris. Um, just uh, for the record, are the drawings that were included in the uh, staff report uh, the most updated of, I'm just not sure if you made a comment about additional screening and I'm not sure if that actually appears on, on the drawings that we've got on the staff report, is that correct? Uh, the drawings we have uh, the, on the new staff report, they show a screening of um, hemlocks of, of, of taxis plants uh, used at the front, which are a very dense evergreen. And we can also layer as you like up and away, they'd be taller than the Molochs. Um, 
we're we're completely willing to work with you like we can set okay. them back a little bit further as well just to make sure that there's enough landscape screening to satisfy everyone um and, and that's a very good uh point to raise um so uh, from a presentation perspective, uh, Chris, was that uh, you wanted to cover this? Are we okay to go ahead? Yes, yes. Yes, yeah, okay. I wasn't sure if you wanted to put anything up uh, on the screen, but that's fine. Um, so at this point, then I will ask if there is anyone here from the public that wishes to uh, speak uh, on this particular application. And my notes are telling me that there is a, a, a Seymour Martin who is a resident. Yes, I, this is Seymour Martin. Good I, evening, sir. Good evening and uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Martin, to the uh, Committee of Adjustment. Just for the record, I'll just ask you to state your, your name and your address, please. Yes, and, and before I do that, I was not privy to the proceedings up until about a minute ago. I'm not sure what happened to my communication um, here, but I just heard the last couple of minutes of um, what you had to say. I heard nothing before. But um, yes, I am Seymour Martin. I reside at 5 Jarvis Avenue. Um, I take it, you know, we are discussing the matter of the variance application with um, with respect to three three Jarvis Avenue. That is correct. Okay. Uh, let so, me just let, let me just ask you then uh, if you weren't privileged to uh, what uh, the applicant had just spoken uh, to the committee with regard to this application. Have you seen the staff report and the uh, report that uh, uh, provides comments from uh, from uh, the staff? Have, have you seen the, uh, the report itself? No, I have not seen any of that. I see. I have not seen any of that, but I am prepared to present you with what I have. Very good. And yeah, because well, before I do that, did anyone from the Hazelburn development speak to this matter? No, so I'm, you were you were the first. I am the first. Okay, thanks for that clarification. So, okay, so then I am Seymour Martin. I'm a neighbor, immediate neighbor to three to three Jarvis. I have provided to your committee by way of the town, a letter, a personal letter dated the 3rd of December, 2022. And in that letter, I have delineated my points with respect to why I cannot support this application. Are you able to confirm for me that you are in receipt of this letter? Uh Yes, sir, we are. Uh, we're in receipt of um, three uh, separate um, submissions to the committee. Yes, so I'm aware that, you know, th there are lists, maybe about three lists of signatures of residents of the development. Um, I believe that list was garnered by my neighbor, Robert Sparing and provided to, to, to the town um, by him some days ago. Is, is that the list to which you make reference? Uh, yes, it is, sir, yeah. All right, okay. So between those lists and my own letter, I think our position has been adequately presented to the committee and you know, tonight, all I would care to do is to reiterate the points we have garnered in the correspondence we've just talked about. So my letter and, and the, the, the statements um, of other neighbors. But, um, I, I, you know, I, I don't know that whether you've had the opportunity to read my letter 
and whether or not you wish me to elaborate on any particular point that I have raised in my letter. Um, we have uh, read the letter. And I see. We are definitely aware of your concerns. Okay. And I can I can tell you that um, you know I'm I'm sorry uh, even at the very introduction of this item, um, and I'm sorry if if you didn't catch it all. We um, didn't. I didn't catch any. We were uh, wondering, my wife and myself, what was going on. You know. So we we are reaching you by okay. way of um, a conference call situation because we didn't have. Yeah, the, the proper setup for the the electronic meeting. So that, this may be the explanation for what has transpired. Right. And that's and, and okay. That that's yes. fine. And and we're very much aware of um, the comments that were made by members of the public and the I con see. and the content of your letter and, and the content of the objections that uh, uh, that that, that we are more than, than aware of. And I believe the applicant received those as well. Um, and if, uh, if you, pardon me for coining an expression, if you just tuned in, uh, the applicant uh, who is with us uh, this evening had indicated a willingness uh, to work with uh, this committee and staff um, with uh, possible suggestions uh, in in the hopes of dealing with your concerns and any concerns that we also might have here. I see. Now, yeah, you know, I, I wanted to present as a, bit, as a bit of preamble the fact that, you know, the Hill Centigers have been neighbors for a few years, right? They are not coming into the development brand new. You know, they, they currently live here. And I have, a, I have had the pleasure of meeting them. I think they're a lovely couple. Uh, you know, I have met their children and I look forward to their moving next door. And the point I'm trying to make here is that there is nothing adversarial in our position towards this application. There's nothing to be construed as being personal. We like them and we welcome them, you know, to, you know, a different section of the development. Not an adversarial, but we thought that what we were doing was quite frankly in the best interest of three Jarvis, uh, as well as the street a little more broadly, and even more broadly, the, the small community of about 44 number, 44 um, homes, our homeowners, you know, in, in, in Hazelburn. But as I said, I just wanted that to be made very clear that, you know, there is nothing uh, uh, negative uh, or no negative feelings at all. You know, I think. Understood. Yeah, those neighbors who have met them, have, you know, have very warm and amicable feelings towards them. I, I just wanted to make sure that is out there. Th thank you very much and uh, appreciate you uh, qualifying those comments. Uh... Uh, that you've made. Um, You're welcome. And you, you may find that uh, we're going to get, I, I know that I have a number of questions for the applicant and I'm sure that my colleagues as well uh, have some comments and questions to the applicant. And by going through that process, I think you might find that um, some of your concerns um, may very well be addressed. Oh, I'm pleased um, to hear that. And, and I'm also not for a moment uh, suggesting to you that, um, that a decision uh, has been made categorically. We, we, we certainly have concerns. So um, we hope to, or questions and have those uh, answered and, um, and covered off appropriately before we, we make a decision. So uh, no pre-decision has been made on this by, on, by any stretch of the imagination. That's our job, that's what we're here for. Thanks, Mr. Chairman, I appreciate your clarifying that. And may I further clarify, when will a decision be made approximately, within, within days, within? No, um, if you continue listening, I think you will find that we will uh, be likely making a decision within uh, 
uh, the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes, if not less. Oh, 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 okay. That's a pleasant surprise. Thank you. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. Um, so with that, I do not believe there is any other um, member of the public who wishes to address the committee. Um, I did see, Chris, you nod your head when uh, the discussion about um, um, the letters that we've received and uh, the circulated uh, petition uh, with the signatures on it. Uh, you've received copies of those, I assume. Okay. Yes, and uh, and the owners have received it as well, and they're uh, like I mentioned that that's why we put this biggest emphasis, and they're they're willing to work with everyone to make sure this is as satisfactory as possible. That they, they really like the neighborhood, they they like all their neighbors, they uh, want this to be very harmonious. <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's move on then to um, comments, questions from the members of the committee. I'll save mine for last, as I normally do. Uh, but I'll turn it over to the committee and I see a smiling face there. Uh, Daniel, go right ahead if you have any comments or questions. And you'll need to unmute your mic. Rookie mistake. My first, my first comment of the year. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much to the chair. Um, so, so I'm going to, uh, my main, my main concern, let me start off with my concern and then I can get into specifics. Um, my main concern is when we start privatizing public services and making adjustments in order to support that privatization, um, I get a little bit nervous in terms of the repercussions to, to neighbors. If this was um, a little bit more south in Aurora, where it's a lot more open and there are area, other areas where uh, there are unassumed roads, um, I wouldn't be so, uh, um, I wouldn't <laughs> I keep repeating the word concern, but let's just continue with it. I wouldn't be so concerned. Um, you see from the neighbors, and there's a wide list, there's three pages of signatures and, uh, and other comments. Um, this is not purely a question of, of um, the, the bins being uh, 1.3 meters, I believe, as opposed to a regular one meter, 0.8 meter bin. Um, th th there's, there's other repercussions to going down this path. I also wonder, um, in terms of the impact, um, of, of uh, um, if, if there are so many people living in, in, this, uh, in this location, is there other concerns that should be addressed? But that's not for, for, for me to bring up at this time. Um, I'm just more concerned in terms of what does it, what does it, what does it mean to the neighborhood? What does it mean to everybody that now there's a truck that has to come specifically for one individual who doesn't want to use the public system that works for everybody else? Um, that there are um, pos that a lot of this is, is caused by um, by by the gym or the, the the garage not being able to support storage anymore. Um, if why wasn't simply a storage space made for city bins to be stored. If that's such a the concern, why do we have to go to a private system that you can delay and if it makes it a lot easier to, to, to travel or not have occupants, et cetera. There's just so many questions and, and, um, and, and concerns that, that are mirrored by the comments. And I bring a little bit, a little step forward in terms of the privatization or the private part of, of this. Um, I, I know, Chris, I'm putting you in a in an interesting position, but uh, can you maybe address why go down the the the, the, the private um, the private? Yes, um, there are cir circumstances in terms of having more garbage than than the neighbors. Um, we'll leave the, the 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 other question that 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 leaves apart. But we have a system for that. You buy the tag. You can buy as many tags as you want, and you can have more garbage. So we have that process in place already. Um, there, there, all the concerns and all the reasons in terms of why you want to go with these bins or your customer wants to go with these bins or your client, sorry, wants to go with these bins, the town and then the other city town have processes in place. Um, so, so what is the, what is the main reason or, 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 or can you comment maybe be easier? Can you comment on, on my concerns? You're muted. Uh, I can't comment 
specifically uh, on on the behalf of the uh, owners, which aren't aren't here. But I, I guess uh, for a couple of methods, maybe I can and I can look into that. For one, the um, the concerns of the neighbors, especially on this uh, on this larger letter here, seem to be primarily uh, focused around it being an eyesore, affecting property values and such. Um, and I, I am also wondering how much information they were privy to about the design, right? They seem to think it's a going to be a large industrial bin when it's not. It's also going to be very buffered and, and very protected. But beyond that, um, in terms of privatizing municipal services, um, it's just, uh, I, I, I think on be, the owners are maybe feeling that it's just more convenient, especially when they have large uh, family gatherings. Um, in commercial applications, these can be stored for for quite a bit of time, although I think they're thinking this would be picked up every couple of weeks and so forth. Um, it's also an interesting way to maybe progress things because I know um, the owner's line of work is, uh, you know, coming up with future concepts, like like, like testing the future a little bit, uh, testing systems and so forth. And, uh, you know, it's technology based and, you know, he, I believe he, he evaluates um, he evaluates new technology coming in, and this is this might be a way of kind of maybe seeing how this might work. I mean, it, certain strategy we, we believe this will this could be an improvement over the domestic service, right? Um, in terms of cleanliness, efficiency, not making a mess in the street. So th there might be that bit of an interest. Um, as for exactly why I'm, uh, you know, I, I can't really speak for him because I'm, um, I'm not, I'm not the owners. But you know, the, 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 those points and values. A lot of it is that they are anticipating producing large volumes of garbage every so often. There's kind of traditionally a, a three bag limit, and they just think this is the most efficient way of of, uh, of having this done while, you know, maximizing their garages and not having a large amount of garbage sitting in there. Yeah, the, the, it, it is a, a very efficient way of a uh, dealing with garbage and in, in terms of uh, maybe having a, a larger amount, and and as well, it is an efficient way of of uh, not not having to to um, worry about taking garbage out. Although every every piece of recycling, there's a nice little walk there in order to bring it to the bin, um, but. I think what has been over um, overlooked until these letters have been received is the impact on the neighborhood. And uh, I think on the visuals, you're, 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 you might be doing a good job of hiding, but there are some of these um, where I walked just off of, uh, just before Leslie between um, uh, where the uh, where the LCBO is and so forth. And there are some of these bins and stuff gets dropped or it goes, they're, they're not perfect. Um, but yeah, anyways, um, so my main concern just remains the, 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 the same thing is that we're this in the, your, your client is now imposing on the neighborhood in order to have an additional service provided for something that is already, um, timed and provided by, by the, by the town. Um, there's a little bit of a concern as to whether or not uh, would it be picked up as frequently. The recycling, for example, is picked up as as, as frequently. A lot of sugars, a lot of uh, uh, sweet um, products are usually in bottles. And the reason I bring that up is the problem with the one down the street here is bees during the summer. So there's just some factors here that are just not making this comfortable for me. Um, yes, they are. Um, they, they can last very long, um, but. I'm still not feeling comfortable and my main concerns coming in. I don't want to repeat myself. So I'm trying to come up with new comments as opposed to repeating my, my previous ones. Um, I, I'm more comfortable with the look. I am less comfortable with the tools. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Daniel. Yeah, I, you know what? Um, let's go through the committee, Daniel and uh, if you do come up with uh, anything, I'll, I'll, I'm happy to come back um, as part of the discussion as we normally do. Uh, let me go to Steve. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, I, I have a few uh, uh, different uh, 
um, questions here. And through you, Mr. Chair, just um, to the applicant's representative, um, I, I appreciate, uh, first of all, your, uh, your comment that you're willing to work with staff and it sounds like residents. Were there any attempts to work with residents prior to the meeting? Because I mean, obviously I think you've seen the, the comments that came from residents. Um, it sounds like there's a really good relationship you know, between your clients and their immediate neighbors. Um, I, I'm just curious uh, as to what attempts were, were made prior to reach, uh, to address their concerns. Um, again, I'm not sure. I, I know they speak with residents uh, pretty frequently because they live around the corner right now. They're, they're, they're primary residents. I'm not sure if they spoke with the residents specifically about this beforehand. Okay. Yeah, I, it, it just, you know, often we do see this and, um, you know, there, there is a solution to be made, but it, it puts the committee in a difficult position because you have, and especially in this case, as, as uh, Daniel has mentioned, there's quite a few of the residents in in opposition to this. Um, now, I will note that, uh, you know, as uh, as the immediate neighbor mentioned, um, you know, I think some of the concerns that are raised by the residents, uh, they might not have seen um, the plans, the drawings, the measures that you are willing to take. And once again, I think had there been a better circulation, a better dialogue, you know, you probably wouldn't have these two opposing positions that the committee ends up being the mediator of the two. So I, I would just, I, I throw that, that out there as a comment because we're now in a position where we have to decide which of these uh, 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 positions will satisfy because it doesn't sound like it's possible to satisfy both. So, um, you know, but that's, that is our position. Um, I do have some other questions. One, I've looked at the plan and, and first of all, I just want to um, confirm, you know, I visited the site today. I would like to confirm my understanding of where these Moloks would go. So when you enter the driveway facing the house, it'll be on the right hand side. And there are two rather large mature trees on the property. And uh, through the map, it didn't, didn't give a, an exact, I don't believe an exact distance from the road, but it appeared to be between 20 and 25 feet. And I paced it off, which put it in between those two trees. And what I noticed well, actually to the right where I think the mullets would go, there was a yellow, a yellow flag. I just, I, I don't know if I'm explaining myself well, but um, in reference to those two trees, where would the Mollocks be going in that concrete pad? Okay, um, I will say since uh, the reason why this application was deferred last month is because we relocated the uh, Mollocks a little bit. Um, we had a driveway that was located exactly where it is now previously, but then we realized that wouldn't exactly work, especially in light of some of the comments we were getting early from the committee. Um, so if you look at the current plan, we are moving the driveway northwards a bit. Um, so we would be avoiding those trees and we would be using that berm more to shield it from the, um, from the south and southwest. We'd be planting around that. So the, the, the idea is not to destroy trees, not to go through any utility lines. We're going to be uh, moving the driveway a bit north way and, uh, and you know, placing the Moloch's um, a little bit northeast of those trees. Northeast, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, I follow and that's that's great context. I Maybe I missed it. I didn't realize there was a relocation of the driveway. So um, just to address my concern and, and I don't wanna get ahead of ourselves, but if there is an application or, or a motion to approve this application, I'd like to um, uh, recommend uh, some additional conditions and, and I'll just sort of uh, run it by you here. Based on what you were saying, <clears throat> it sounds like um, no trees, there is no intention to remove or damage trees. Uh, I've got that correct? Yes, yes. If, if anything oh. does happen to trees, which I'm really hoping doesn't and it's not the idea, we will definitely uh, compensate for those. Okay, well, with additional I, I landscaping. 
that's where I'm, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to avoid here with my comments because we often see that that people ask for forgiveness as opposed to uh, permission. And so one of the condition that I would uh, and I made a few notes and it doesn't have to be exactly this, but the condition that I would recommend is that no trees will be removed or damaged as a result of the proposed installation of the Molex. Uh, furthermore, tree preservation or monitoring measures may be warranted uh, as determined by staff, which is, uh, and I think we, we have, staff has a general, um, this is a general condition that we put in place where there are, um, you know, mature trees that we want to ensure are maintained on the property and are not sacrificed to as a result of the minor variance. So I, I'd put that forward. Would you have any objection to a uh, condition of that sort? No, no, I wouldn't. Okay. And, um, and also uh, your earlier comments too, about the, uh, the neighbors and so on. I, I think, I didn't think it, I think it didn't occur to the owners that there would be any kind of conflict with the neighbors on this. Uh, the idea was just to do this as discreet as possible. Lewis is even telling me we want this to be just extremely discreet, not, imposing on anyone at all. So I, I don't think they were, uh, and the letters we just uh, kind of saw yesterday. So they weren't anticipating that. And the, you know, they, they would love to work with as many people as possible to make this happen to everyone's satisfaction. Understood. And, and uh, you know, certainly, and that's actually, um, I, I thank you for that. And, and through you, Mr. Chair, I do have two additional conditions that I'd like to propose should the committee members uh, see fit to, to put a motion to approve here. Um, and I think both are consistent with what you're saying. It's just uh, to ensure that, um, that, that uh, the concerns of the community are met and you, have, you are making efforts to do that. Um, and we just want those reflected. So my, my other two conditions would be, from what I understand, the Moloks are to be under one meter uh, in height above grade and that there is proposed screening that will be a minimum of 1.2 meters. So if I've got that right, what I would suggest is that, uh, um, that we put the Mollex to be under uh, 1.2 meters in height, um, and that screening will be a minimum of 1.2 meters in height. And I think that that's consistent with what is written in the report, but I would just like it to be a condition so that we don't get these big industrial mollicks that, you know, are large and larger than what is uh, uh, proposed in, and has been considered in the staff report. Um, so that would be my first, maybe I'll go through the second. And then the second condition I would say is that uh, the condition that, uh, that uh, these mollicks are uh, strictly for residential use and are not to be used for any commercial purposes. And I think that's consistent with what the committee has uh, heard tonight as well. Yes, I agree. That was uh, one of the first questions that we were asked by the committee last month and uh, definitely no commercial, any sort of activities. This is entirely residential. Perfect. So, so through you, Mr. Chair, if I might confirm, so it sounds like you're okay with those conditions should they be proposed. Is, is that uh, correct, uh, Chris? Yes, yes. Okay. And, and maybe through you, Mr. Chair, maybe we could just go to staff to make sure that I'm not off, you know, off base in proposing these conditions and that staff do not have any concerns if we were to propose these conditions. Just, just before we do that, there may be additional conditions coming. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, so, so that's, uh, um, th those are the, uh, the items in addition to obviously what Daniel, uh, 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 mentioned and, and um, through you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I'd make a comment. This this one is a little bit tough. Uh, obviously, I think I've sort of I, I I've made my peace with this application, but I do struggle to when um, you know when we hear that um, you know a garage has been converted into a, a gym and therefore it's going to require all of these variances and generate community opposition. Um, Personally, I, I think that as long as we can ensure that these residential concerns are addressed, and it sounds like they are, I, I, I would be comfortable um, uh, supporting this application with, with some of the same reservations that, uh, that Daniel has expressed. Um, but that's, that's my position, and uh, I'll, 
I'll, I'll listen with interest to the other committee members' uh, comments. Thank you, Stephen. And actually, you're making me think about something. And let me let, let me go to Rosanna just for a second, if you don't mind. Um, Rosanna, while it is fresh in your mind on the four um, uh, additional conditions that that uh, Steve is is uh, talking about adding, uh, just on those four, do you see any any problem um, with adding with adding any of those? So no trees uh, being removed, the tree preservation um, be um, a possible condition or be a condition in accordance with the regular conditions on tree res uh, preservation that we normally see, um, that the uh, height of the uh, containers be limited to 1.2 meters and that the screening be a minimum of 1.2 meters. And I think we'd really make it a fifth condition um, that they be uh, residential use and not commercial. So that's really five, if I've got it straight. Uh, anything from your side on the staff side that would raise eyebrows there? So the first one, uh, just one, um, the one that says um, that no trees be removed. I agree. However, it's hard to um, put that as a condition without knowing once what is going to happen. <laughs> like, so uh, these conditions are generally fulfilled prior to building permit issuance. Uh, the secretary treasurer will sign off and say it's satisfactory. So right now I know there is some uh, shrubs, that, like there is some screening, but the owner will be adding more uh, at the director's satisfaction. So we'll be looking at it before and we'll be looking at it, not we, the director after. So in my humble opinion, I believe number two covers it in a way. I know yours is a little more detailed, but I think because we know the concerns of the residents, we know like all the issues, the director would be signing off and ensuring it's screened appropriately and it's not um, affecting or making it sightly, so I guess. If the, if the condition was worded uh, slightly different, that, mm -hmm. that all efforts, all efforts, to preserve existing trees be made. That might be. And that in the event, like, and, and I know what happens is in accordance with the town's tree uh, removal yep. policies, yep. you take out a, a 12 inch diameter tree and replace it with a three inch diameter. And that's, that's what I think what Steve is getting at. Uh, you've got a fairly, a number of fairly mature trees there the risk is that if for whatever reason, you know, no fault, um, it, but it just happens, now you've got a situation where, for lack of a better word, I'm, I'm replacing a tree with a stick. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the concern. And Steve, do you want to comment? Is yeah, and, and uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Rosanna, and thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, yeah, I, I think we've done this in the past. Um, and uh, my, you know, I realize that the town has a, uh, a tree compensation plan. Uh, I think you've, you've outlined well what my concerns are. And, you know, we've, we've talked about the, the applicant, um, you know, choosing to, you know, limit the amount of garage space so that they have a gym. Um, you know, I think there's a good, um, you know, there's a good attempt to, to really screen and mitigate the impacts to the community. I, I'm comfortable with those. But if you layer on that now we're going to be removing several mature trees on the property and affecting the streetscape uh, and the character of the neighborhood, which has, you know, and, and it, you know, which is not the intent here then I would have to weigh that too, or, you know, am I comfortable with that and that additional impact, you know, for the convenience based on a choice that the, the applicant has made, you know, there, there are additional impacts. Now, I think you raise a very good point, Rosanna, that, you know, when we talk about trees, what are we talking about? And I think that we have been more specific in the past um, perhaps what we can say is that no trees in excess of, you know, uh, height, X height, or the specific trees in the front yard, uh, you know, um, 
that, that no trees in the front yard or no mature trees in the front yard will be, uh, you know, removed or damaged. So that we're not talking about little saplings or little uh, shrubs. Uh, I, I, I'd be comfortable making that amendment as well. That's, I think that's a very good point. Through the chair, I do agree with that. We can add and maybe condition that tree preservation fencing be erected. Um, of course, they'll be in the kind of that area, but we can, the tree preservation be erected prior to uh, the build. I guess they won't even need a building permit if I think about it. <laughs> no, so this is a little unique. What we can do is probably work with the owner and work with, with our tree preservation staff to get that erected or at least uh, an agreement between just to make sure where the works is happening. Maybe we don't get that, maybe take some footage and pictures of what's there right now to make sure it's um, recorded, I guess, in a way, just to make sure there's, if should something happen, the town does have. Um, right. and, and I think through you, Mr. Chair, I, I think one of the complicating measures here is that <laughs> were the trees on the drawings, I'd be able to point out to the trees that I have concern with, uh, but, uh, you know, and, and uh, uh, to the applicant's representative that I, I would just note the drawings are incomplete because they don't actually show the entire property or at very least the, the mature trees that are in the front yard right now, I don't believe are on the drawings right now. We so, well, uh, hold on a sec. I, I, thought, I, thought they, I thought they were on the site plan if they are, maybe we can through you message. Yeah. Maybe we can so, we can designate Peter, which ones. Peter, uh, would it be possible for you to put that uh, site plan that's in the staff report uh, up on the screen? Through you, Mr. Chair. Yes, I can. I could also share a screen if you want, but uh, yep, whatever is easiest. Or whoever has the latest version of that drawing. Uh, Chris, I, I don't know if there's. Okay. Um... And while we're waiting for that, uh, let me just point out that second condition that already is in the appendix. And I'm sure members of the committee have, have checked this out, but that the owner shall provide and maintain appropriate screening to screen the proposed Mollocks, which includes but not limited to. So th that not limited to is is a a, a little bit open ended. It it allows for uh, some discretion here. A landscaped buffer strip containing shrubs, hedges, plantings, or other ground cover, and any other additional screening measures, which could be could be trees to the satisfaction of the Director of Planning and Development Services or designate. And um, it, this is why we have, um, Chris, people like Rosanna attend these meetings uh, and Peter attend these meetings. These are, as you know, planning department staff. Um, they have, uh, you know, direct access to, to the director or, or his designate um, and would be more than aware of uh, what we're talking about this evening. But um, so I see we've got that plan up. Uh, so maybe what yeah. we can do. Um, I, I can guide you a little bit through it. Um, if you want to, so there, there are mature trees on either side. We're rearranging the, the driveway so it's more centered along there. Um, actually, if you scroll up a little bit, uh, the, the first page, the site plan. I'd like to also point out, I guess uh, the house uh, which we are renovating now has two garages. So, so the one uh, that's kind of straight facing west is, uh, is the one being converted to the gym. But then there's another one that you turn in that's south facing. You can see the two arrows by the uh, kind of faint arrows over there, but it's a double car garage that we're preserving as a garage. It's just they would keep their cars in and, and not the amount of garbage as well as kind of the environmental things are happening from said garbage. But uh, anyway, I'm, I'm just making that point. But also if you go towards the driveway there, yeah, we have trees plotted out over there. Um, we have some screening. Um, if needed, we can kind of adjust the direction of the gates and so forth to, uh, to provide even more screening if possible or the Mollocks. 
Um, I think the last one in this slide, or, or the, the, the next page perhaps, or two pages from now, I have a uh, street view. Or is that, uh, oh, that's the drawing set from before. Okay, anyway, uh, yeah, from the street view, you can see it as well. Um, the, the more important uh, or more, more mature trees are to the south of this sketch here, um, where you have some birches and I think a pine or two, as well as a berm, a landscape berm there. To the right, you have a couple of smaller trees, but then the mature trees like a, a coniferous is, is, is a little bit further up. The ones that are closer are a little bit smaller. And I'd also like to emphasize that the owners very much value their privacy and they would, the more screening, the better. Like uh, the, the, the larger the trees in front, the better in their opinion. So if I may, uh, Mr. Chair, um, sure. so if I look to the bottom of the page here where it looks like those are four trees, correct? Uh, in a line um, uh, parallel to the, to, the, to the street. So I'm aware of those, but just immediately to the right of the driveway, there were two, I'd say probably 15, 20 feet tall mm -hmm. trees. I'm not sure if they were birches or maples, but, um, and, and they were immediately beside the existing driveway uh, and really where those two mollips would go um, if, if that were the existing driveway. So I, 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 unfortunately we don't, this is, this is the site plan. Um, I don't know if we have the existing, but essentially I, I understand those four trees that are showing there, but there were an additional trees that ran parallel to the driveway um, that are existing. And uh, as I spent, so I'm not seeing those on the map. Yeah, we don't have that drawing, I don't think. I yeah. can, I could share the screen to, uh, let me see here. Oh, why is it showing both? I am not sure why it is. Uh... Okay, I could just go to my PowerPoint here. Um, if yep. you want, I can share the screen a little bit here. Yep. You cannot share while the other participant is sharing. Am I permitted to there? Okay, so going to here, I've just added a third one down here. So this is the view from the driveway here. This is the existing driveway. So the idea is, I think these trees are placed a little bit further back, which we also have, but the idea is to have the driveway relocated so that it is going more straight over here, which would provide some room for the Mollocks over here on, on flatter ground and also buffered by over here. So the idea is not to touch these at all. We would like to not touch these either. These two trees are set a little bit further back. The driveway is intended to come out more straight this way. So if I may, um... It's for really, you, Mr. Chair. Those, if we're looking at the driveway, the trees that are on both sides of the driveway, where are those on the drawing that are running parallel to the driveway? Um, you, you, yeah, you've got your cursor over them right now, like those those two on the right, and then there's a few on the left there. Got here, and then a couple trees back here. This is given to us by the landscaping company. Yeah, I don't, it doesn't seem accurate in terms of, uh, at least when I paste it off. Um, so, I mean, we were looking at three trees on either side, at least three trees. I think there's probably four, uh, two on each side of the driveway that I'm not seeing the existing driveway. Those are the ones at the front of the property and in a line. Mm -hmm. These ones are close to the property. These ones are set a bit yeah. further back. Yeah. So those ones that are set a little further back, what are those maples or uh, I don't know what they are. I'm not it doesn't matter, really sure. They're deciduous. They could be uh Yeah, they're, they're better right maples. Now. Yeah. So mm. the question is, I'm not seeing those on the drawings. And those are the ones that, you know, if you're going to relocate the driveway and put, you know, to the north and then mm. place the mollocks to the right of it, it, it looks like those ones now that are on the left uh, of the driveway are right where the mollocks would go. Are they not? I think yeah. these ones are set further back. Yeah, those are set the the Mullocks would be over here yeah. with the way yeah. we are relocating. They're, they're more in line with these trees, yeah. a little bit further back than them. So these are set further back into the property. See, but but this this is my, if you go back to your conceptual, your site plan drawings, there are no trees around the Mullocks. So I can't tell 
essentially, yeah, there's the ones that are in parallel to the road, but those four that are parallel to the driveway are not showing on your on your drawing anywhere. And those are the ones that, um, you know, we don't, you know, we don't see them. I don't know if the plan, I assume the plan was to get rid of them, but I, I, no. these, the, the ones, sorry, not the ones at the front, those ones at the front, I think are outlined on, those are the ones on your map, those ones in the middle, right in front of the house. If you look at the house, either side of the door there. Mm. I, those I thought, are... wait, hold hold it there go back to the larger the, the, i i think i think you are they are showing them uh steve those two right there that the mouse is going over are the two closest to the road and i think behind it's not on that drawing but there's exactly. the other there's the four right there exactly <laughs> well but then it, okay so you know if that's the case then i think that that are <laughs> because i went to the road and i paced back when i looked at just the different, I, I think the distance, if you zoom in between right in front of the Molex, it says, I think 11 feet, six inches, I think is that distance there. So I use that to say that the Molex are probably about 20, 25 feet from the road. And when I paste it off, like those, <laughs> this is showing those trees as, as a good 40, 50 feet back from the road. That's not where they are. So I, I you know, I, I, uh, if those are the four trees and that's fine and the Mollocks are going to go in front, then they're a lot closer to the road. And we don't really actually on this map have any good uh, dimensions as to how far set back from the road the Mollocks are going to be, unless I've missed it. And maybe, Chris, you can show me where on the site plan it shows how far set back from the road they are actually going to be. No, I think we have a dimension from the property line, not from the uh, road. Right, which makes it really, like, so what I was doing is I was looking at just that distance there. I think if you zoom in, it says about right in front of the Mollocks, it says uh, 11 feet, 6 inches, I think. Mm -hmm. And then so if you just sort of, and I was, I paced off from the road, it looks to be about 20, 25 feet that they'd be set in. But when you get to 20, 25 feet, you're in between the two trees. Oh, so, so something seems off in this map is, is basically what I'm in the site plan. Yeah, we can take more detailed measurements if you'd like. We got these, yeah, but, uh, this drawing from the landscape company who I assume right. it, measured and, it. You know, it. You know, not to belabor the point, I think those four trees that you're showing on the map, whether they're situated correctly or the dimensions are correct, those are, it, it looks to me, like you're placing the Mollocks before them and not mm -hmm. in between them. Um, yeah, they, they'd be kind the, of behind these ones. These are the front ones. Then I, these are the ones that were kind of more towards the back. So we can take more detailed dimensions and kind of verify uh, where these are. I think, I think the dimensions are off on that front part of your driveway is what it is, because that means that they're probably only going to be set back mm -hmm. about 10 feet from the road. So that... Um, the the Mollocks? Uh, it it, it looked 10 or 15 feet based on like, see, the problem is you don't have dimension, you don't have uh, distances there. Right. Yeah. And, and when I, when I paced off 20, 25 feet, you're between those two trees. Yeah. So if they're in front at uh, in front of the berm there and right beside those trees, the way it looks, <clears throat> they're a lot closer to the road than what would be indicated by the actual measurements on your site plan. But the problem is the site, the measurements are missing on the driveway side. Um, so I, anyway, my, I, I think my point still stands. The, the, we can certainly say that um, these four mature trees and the trees at the front of the property, mature trees at the front of the property will not be affected, right? That's, I, I think that's yeah. what I'm getting at here. Um, and I do have some question because I, I think conceptually I thought that the mullets were going to be set back a lot mm -hmm. than they actually are. Well, I think if, if we're scaling from the drawing, they're at least 30 feet from the road. Well, uh, 35. Case, well, this is 15 here, and then you take that 15, 15, 30. So if yeah. that's the case, uh, <laughs> then, then, uh, then you'd be quite a bit uh, 15 from the road. If they're 30 feet back, then you're the scale, like the, it's way off because those trees were only about 30 feet back, the first trees. Mm -hmm. And they're pretty close together is the other thing, the trunks there. I, I, I'm looking at what uh, mm -hmm. is, uh, anyway. 
Yeah, our, our intent is to avoid those trees altogether. Move the driveway yeah. this way, avoid them, and uh, yeah, if, if we, whatever you'd like to put in the conditions, we can. Uh, we'll take more detailed measurements if you'd like, and uh, no, I and definitely I, I work with you. I, I I appreciate that. I don't believe that would be necessary. I think as long as we just state that these those three and four mature trees at the front of the property and the four in the front yard that are set back further will not be impacted, then uh, I, I'd be comfortable. But, but it's interesting because that's the site plan and you say you're moving the driveway north and um, those trees are, are beside, are still on either side of the driveway. So maybe I was on, I don't know if I was on a new driveway or I think the driveway uh, that, that had uh, our design from last month, which did raise a few concerns about its proximity to the trees, the driveway was coming in over here, like the existing driveway. Mm -hmm. So yeah, our, move, our idea is to more centralize it, to give more room for uh, the Molochs mm -hmm. and the plantings and also to shield from this side. Uh, it, it, it may be that I was on the, a new driveway and they've already uh, landscaped it, but it, it, in any event, um, Thank you. I, I, I think I'm, I'm clear and that would be my suggestion is that we can actually designate those, we'll call it nine mature trees, are not to be uh, showing on the site plan in existence. If we, if we, Steve, if we mentioned specifically drawings as submitted in the staff report, yeah. and trees identified as such, yeah. I, think, I think that gives staff the um, the right information to take to the director or designate so that we can clearly identify what it is, whether the landscape architect has located them, you know, uh, in, you know, if, if it's not accurate, what's reflected there is what we see on the property. And so um, they may be off by five or, you know, five or six or seven feet in, in, in any direction, but that conceptually is is what we're approving. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you. Thank you, Chris, for uh, <clears throat> explaining and uh, pointing out uh, to us uh, from from your drawing. There, appreciate that. Um, okay. Let me go to David. Uh, David, go right ahead. Hi, uh, through the chair. Uh, I just want to, to follow up first yeah, on the, the other member, Steve, uh, just to, before I ask my own, but uh, just to follow up, I was going to have similar questions on what you touched on. <clears throat> um, I just want to be fair. Uh, uh, what uh, my other member was talking about, about the landscape drawing. Uh, in my humble opinion, I may be wrong, but it doesn't seem the distances are correct. And those four trees which you have put behind the gate, they are not at that location. Based on what you see on the side, they are very, very close, closer to the road, closer to those other areas, closer to where you are proposing a gate. And if you are talking about the uh, proposed entrance, if you look at that uh, 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 Google map you are showing, for example, the canopy of those trees are really close to the pavement of of that, that entrance already. So when you're talking about relocating the, uh, the, uh, the access, probably very, very close within the uh, town's right of way, yes. But if you're talking about inside there, I don't think so. If you look at the canopy and look at the location of those, they're really beside each other and beside the end of the pavements. So unless you're going to destroy those trees, but again, the point I'm trying to emphasize is the landscape where it shows that you've got the trees in front where you have got the uh, monarchs and then you have the gate and then you've got those uh, four trees, two on each side being away and separated. Uh, you need to really look at your drawing. And this makes me feel like maybe, you know, we need to do something here because I don't think we have all the correct information here. <clears throat> then uh, the other additional point based on uh, the other member Steve mentioned about if, if, and only if we're going to approve this, about the protection of trees, I would suggest there are two, three steps, which you would see in all the town's conditions when there are trees. 
And it is another, the third application which you're going to look at. The first thing is you do an evaluation report. In other, uh, in other municipalities, they talk of in inventory. So you evaluate, look at the trees, what are the species, where are they, sizes, and so on. And from there, you, just, you look at whether, which trees may be affected and which may be protected and which trees may be uh, removed. So it's done through that evaluation report. It's a standard a procedure the town has been using. And it's every report you see where there are trees. It's the same. So first thing you do evaluation. And I will quickly refer to you the next application I'm going to have. It's the same thing. You do a evaluation report to identify if there are any trees which will be affected. What are they? What are they? What are the species? What are their sizes? And then in the second step is you do you have a schedule of monitoring. So when you are doing construction, you monitor. Okay, at that time you have already identified which trees need to be preserved, and you target them that this will be uh, uh, this will be uh, uh, removed or this will be uh, um, preserved. And then you, when you're doing construction, do monitoring. There's a schedule of monitoring. It's a process the town uses, and the monitoring you have tend to monitor, make sure that it, those which are, uh, need to be preserved will indeed be preserved, and make sure that the construction doesn't impact them. Those which will be removed, we know they will be removed. And of course, there will be already a compensation. So that's the third uh, uh, step. You look at compensation. So you, you identify, for example, the trees which you, you know they'll be removed and you have a compensation plan and how it will be done. And that's the process of what you would do. So I would suggest if we really this is to be approved, this will address what my other member is saying. So you will have to do an evaluation report Second, you'll do the schedule of monitoring, and then you have to compensate those trees if they are going to be removed. It's a standard. If you look at the third application, you see it's the same. For all other applications in the past uh, the, with the town, that's the process. So I thought of just mentioning that, that it's a process which you would do. You would ensure trees are preserved. You would ensure that trees which are removed inevitably or in inevitably, they can be replaced. And you provide a compensation plan. And of course, when doing, doing construction, you do monitoring based on what you have come from the evaluation report. So I thought of just mentioning this before I go to uh, my, uh, my other questions. Perfect, David. Actually, that may very well be a, a, a standard condition that we do have. Yes, yes, yes. Those, yeah, and, those and, 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 and add that. I mean, that's something that yeah, we can yeah. do as well. We address the, uh, 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 issue, but also, as I said, I just emphasize the issue of the landscape drawing doesn't really show things appropriately. Okay. So my own questions, which I had, uh, I have a, a, a few questions. Uh, uh, the first one is, um, currently, currently, uh, the fact that you have repurposed that area of the garage, where do you put the garbage beans, the green beans, as well as the blue beans? That is the garbage beans and the recycled beans. Where do you put them now? I'm well. The house is unoccupied right now. It's being renovated. It was owned by someone else previously. So when it's completed, the owners are going to move in. So I'm I'm not sure. Previously, there were two garages, like I was mentioning. Um, one of the garage has been repurposed into a gym. The other garage is still being used for cars. So it was a double car garage, and I uh, I imagine conventionally they'd be storing garbage in there, but uh, you know they have a car charger, two cars going in there, and um, are anticipating to be generating a, a lot, you know, more than an average household's worth of uh, garbage and recycling. The Molochs, one will be for waste disposal, the other will be for recycling. Green bin, I I think they are handling from. Uh, either inside or in a utility shed over to the north. Yeah, so the, 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 uh, the question I was asking about the green beans and blue beans, that's when you are on the town uh, collection system. You use the green bean and blue bean. And the, I know many people, even myself, they have the green beans. Usually you would have two green beans, you would have two blue beans. And the, uh, I don't want to give a lot of examples. I think two green beans, they would handle even up to five, seven people. And there would be blue beans. And in terms of the space, you know, I'm really very surprised that really we cannot find space for three, four beans 
or even extra. Sometimes people, you get those tags, you would put somewhere, maybe outside and so on, or at the back or somewhere on the side. You cannot really find the space for those. And you need to have an encroachment permit to be outside the gate. That is sort of what worries me a lot in terms of really, you couldn't find any space. So uh, this is just a comment. I don't, uh, there's no way you could address it anyway. But uh, the other question I have for you here, did you look at any uh, thought of having the beans, instead of being outside the gate, putting them inside the gate? Instead of, because putting it outside the gate, that's why you're having an encroachment permit. That's what we're dealing with here. Did you have any thought of just putting inside the gate? Um, I think the minor variance is for the front yard period. So if we're storing them anywhere in front of the main wall of the primary house, I think we need a variance for this, If I'm unless I'm misunderstanding. But yeah, uh, reasoning, I'll, I'll, I'll mention you the other reason I'm, I'm asking this. The reason I'm asking this, I'm looking at two things. <clears throat> Being close to the road for two reasons. One, the odor, the smell, okay, from the beans. The second is, the, as the other uh, uh, the residents have talked about, about ISO or being closed and affecting the house, affecting making the residents. I know you're talking about doing landscaping and all that stuff, but that's how I'm looking at it here. So I'll give an example, and I know of many other people uh, uh, may talk about this. For me, I'm looking at the also many smell. You're talking about the frequency. Of, uh, of removing the garbage. Two weeks, not even one week, the way it's done on the municipal collection system. I'll tell you from my own experience, and I know the other, other people's experience, where even the garbage you have, just you put in the garage, just one week, it starts smelling. Especially with a certain type of food. You have a fish, grills or scales, if there's a fish not, it's not removed, or you say you got the ribs, you got that, you're moving the fat, you put in the in garbage. Within one week, you have smell. Now you're talking about collection by weekly, every two weeks. So that's my concern in terms of the evening is taking longer instead of doing it weekly and actually close to the road. I know that there are no sidewalks, there are many cars, but you have people sometimes walking doing exercises, walking their dogs, or by, you know, riding a bicycle, they would, dis they would smell that. I know you're talking about odor is a bit low, but it's very close to the road. That's why I was talking about what if you put them inside the gate, it becomes a bit further. And this is something you could talk to the residents, okay? If let's say this application gets deferred, you could talk to the residents, oh, now it's a bit far from the road. So, you know, in terms of if you are worried about odor, which of course they didn't mention that. They will talk about soil, uh, soil in the eyes. You have talked about landscaping and additional is behind the gate. That would add even, uh, you know, this application to be favorable. So my question is, did you look at any other alternative uh, like putting inside the gate or somewhere uh, within the house area, maybe wall or somewhere outside, maybe a shade of some sort? Did you look at those? options um if i can answer um i know we we considered inside the gate and outside i know they would prefer it to be outside so that it can be collected without going inside the gate and disturbing them they can also uh reinforce the the driveway if needed for kind of larger trucks to work out that way as as well um in the appendix of the report and we provided this from Moloch as well the the systems are designed to uh, not have any odors or any or or that sort of matter if i can if i can bring it to commercial applications um it's similar in that two thirds of the container is underground uh where the temperature of the soil in there and, and environs kind of naturally creates like a bit of an odor seal there so in commercial applications you find um and, and I'm not saying that this is going to be every two weeks. It could be more frequently. I'm just giving a number out here because um, they can they can schedule this whenever they wish. No, but in commercial applications... Staff the, it, the staff report specifically by weekly. Yeah. In, in commercial applications, uh, a lot of these will be in the middle of plazas 
like in parking right next to stores and they they'll go up to like six months sometimes without being collected so in and if well we, we provide some literature from the manufacturer that shows a few studies about how uh the odor is negligible um as for inside the gates uh i know they'd prefer it to be outside um i know they could consider if they want moving it further back towards the property and moving the gates as well to keep it further away from the road if that's what you and or the residents wish. So my, my other question is, uh, since you are not sure about the, uh, the old door and so on, do you have any uh, monitoring uh, plan just to give you as evidence or support to the town that you are you're monitoring the order. I don't think it's an issue. And the town could you have that. Do you have any such plans? Uh, we, we could provide monitoring if you'd like. Uh, I, I know we provided some reports that were uh, taken on 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 the odor. And th that's part of the that's part of the agenda, I believe, in an appendix. So if we, the other question, if let's say you consider putting uh, the the uh, the uh, the beans inside the gate will you still want to, will you still uh, uh, proceed with the mo uh, monoc or you could have the regular beans and you take them and you put them on the street the regular municipal beans would you still be uh, wishing to follow this uh, monoc system i think they would yeah, I, th I think they would like to pursue the Moloch's system. I, I think they believe that it's it's a superior system. And um, yeah, like I said, it's it's kind of a step towards looking forward in, in a few ways that they kind of, you know, pattern their lifestyle after a bit. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Those are my questions. Thank you. Thank, thank you, D David. Linda. And I'll just, uh, just before we do that, um, <laughs> I, I want to apologize uh, if, uh, if, you, if you will allow me. Uh, Mr. Seymour Martin, I, I misspoke when I said 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and you can understand uh, that uh, in an effort to address not only your concerns, sir, but those of your neighbors and members of the committee, we uh, we are taking more than 10 or 15 minutes. So uh, I see that you're still online. Uh, I, I'll, I'll just ask you to be patient if you wish to stay with us on this uh, item. And I'll ask Linda then to comment, please, or questions uh, at this point. Well, thank you very much through the chair. Thank you, chair. I'm usually in the best position here because mostly everything's been said before <laughs> when I get my turn to talk. <laughs> But I, I did have a few concerns. They are, uh, I mirror them to all my colleagues tonight, for sure, for sure. Um, I, I'm, I'm concerned that you um, came to the Committee of Adjustment tonight without uh, talking to the neighbors first and making us hash this all out mm -hmm. versus you know having concerns that their neighbors had. Maybe you guys could have come to a, a little bit more of a, a consensus of what to do here there is there's 44 houses in that neighborhood and I think all of them have signed negative towards almost to this my question is as well were they told that this is an <clears throat> underground thing were they told that it was not going to be big bins sitting on the front lawn did they get the pictures did they know this kind of information you know before they signed this these uh, like we have to acknowledge that these people have all signed these um, uh, what do you call it? You know, not just not petition. Just, petition. Thank you. <laughs> um, that's my that's my first question. Maybe you could answer that. You know, uh, do they know? Did they know? Were they well informed? I'm not sure about the communication directly with the neighbors. I know they live in the neighborhood. I'm I'm not sure if they breached this subject particularly with everyone. Or yeah, I'm not sure the the extent of communication. I do think uh, on that letter with many neighbors, I suspect one neighbor kind of went door to door and maybe didn't have all the most accurate information when speaking about it. And uh, it's, 
I mean, reading the letter, it seems like uh, the big concern is that's an eyesore and something industrial going in a front lawn that will kind of bring down the values a little bit. But uh, yeah, that's... You see, if, 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 through the chair, thank you. Thank you for that. But through the chair, if, if they had known what you're doing, they might not have signed that petition. They might have had a different opinion just from the aesthetics alone. You know what I mean? And I don't know, sitting here tonight, whether they know what you're doing, you know, whether they're just saying they're thinking it's those big metal bins. I, I can't not think that, you know, and, and as a neighbor, if I heard, oh, you're putting in these big uh, garbage, eight foot deep garbage bins, I don't know what they look like. I've never seen this system till I looked at this, which is really interesting nonetheless, but that's how I would look at it. I don't know if I would sign something but you know what I mean, it, I'm not well informed in, in that case. So how can we make decisions here tonight based on, on looking at that letter from, those, from the rest of the neighbors if, if they haven't been told, maybe they like it. Maybe they all want one, you know, I don't know. So that's one of my problems, concerns, I should say. Um, my other concern is the green bin. I'm assuming they're gonna avoid it completely and just put it with their garbage. Um, you know, whatever, there is no place for it. Uh, you're not allowed carburetors here either. And they are also not on the, they're on a septic system. So they don't, they're not connect, connected to city uh, services there. They have their own in the back there. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm wondering how that's going to be. So I think they're eliminating in the time of year, in the century where we are, you know, reusing things, <laughs> recycle, reuse. This, these people are talking about how much garbage they're gonna have. It's like, it's kind of sad actually. Family of seven is not that big. It's five kids and a couple of adults. You have a couple parties a year, you buy some tags, you put it out. That's all possible, I, I get it. Anyway, moving on. Arborist report obviously should have been there. I'm trying to figure this out. I was there, I saw it. There's two white birches right there. They're not on your diagram anywhere. They were right at the very front. There's a little flag out there. There's a few other things. None of that is mentioned on any of these reports. I don't see it. So I'm assuming that all gets taken down because I think that's the place where your bins go. And I did look, it is pretty muddy out there, but I did look, tried to, to, to figure out where that, that went. So that plan that I'm looking at that you brought up as well, it, it's really doesn't help me much in making a decision of where these things go, you know, and you had the, 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 you know, conversation already about the distance from the road. I agree. I didn't know where it was either. Okay, they're building new buildings in there as well. What are those buildings for where the construction is being gone now? It looks like another garage is going in there. Am I wrong with that? Is the new building in there beside the garage? Uh, no, it's just a shed for, um, for bicycles. And I think there will be green bins stored in that one, that, that north shed. Here, can, if I may share, share the screen. Uh, okay. okay, so if you're following my cursor, there is a shed here, a small one, mm -hmm. and that's going to be for bicycle storage, and I believe uh, there will be some green bins there as well. Um, the other ones, no, it's an existing house, this part, that's a pool cabana, and then that's just a like a, an exterior stand structure there. Right. And yeah, like I was mentioning before, the driveway is being moved northwards a bit to accommodate that and not to uh, destroy the birches over here, birch and pines over here. But that, yeah, through the chair, those those birches and pines aren't marked on your diagram. Those are those other trees. They're bigger trees. There are uh, evergreens or something. The birches are right are closer the other way. I, I, I don't think they're on it. From my picture, what I took today when I was looking and I did take a few, I can't uh, uh, picture. They were right by the, the uh, construction cone, you know, right in that yeah. area. That's where they were. And I, I think uh, if I'm thinking the way I saw today, they are exactly where your two bins are. <laughs> That's where I think they are, right in there in that spot. But then, mm -hmm. like I said, I could be wrong if it's been not marked. Well, that's why we're moving the driveway north. Right now, the driveway goes right here about where my cursor is going. So we're moving yeah. it north. And 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 also, uh, to, I, I agree with you that, uh, yeah, an arborist report, I think, is pretty essential where we mark up trees, take an inventory sure. uh, before proceeding it. with this. 
Yeah, absolutely explains it. And that I guess the fact that you're moving the driveway and we don't see the existing driveway in your mm-hmm. plan, mm-hmm. just the new one. So we can't really compare what the two are. We, I can't anyway. I mean, you, you know, I didn't, I didn't mark it all out. Like Steve was able to uh, pace it out. I didn't do that, which would have made a lot more sense, but I, I don't, I, I can't figure it out myself. Okay. And then, yeah. So and, yeah. Anyway, I, I still, or, I mean, I understand the gate situation and I guess that's why you don't want to uh, have them coming through the gate, but you can, you know, build nice screening around it and you wouldn't see it on the other side of the gate as well, you know, or the, just make a shed for the garbage right beside the garage, you know, build a beautiful thing to wheel them all down, you know, anyway, mm-hmm. uh, there are other alternatives, but um it's hard to make a decision when I don't, we have all the information and I don't think your neighbors have all the information as well, but um, I think that's it. Uh, I appreciate your time and, 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 and trying to show us all how this all works. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Linda and uh, Chris for pulling that back up. Um, yeah, I had a good look at it as well. Um, I, to me, the site or the, the drawing is is certainly, to my eye as well, uh, is is a little bit off. And mm-hmm. a landscaper doesn't necessarily, you know, depending on what drawings he's working with, um, he may be measuring to a certain degree and eyeballing to another. Um, my concerns um, or question, Chris, on that north side, so open to the driveway, mm-hmm. would it be possible to put gates across the front of those from the driveway side so that when the truck comes in, he pulls in and he opens two gates that are roughly a meter point two high? And then, is in other words, is it possible to put a gate that closes that off from view from pedestrians and cyclists coming by as they're heading south? Or yeah, heading south. Oh, you, you mean like a uh, like a little wooden gate that, or something that, that that maybe the guy who's coming to pick it up could open, right? Open. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's a great idea, I think. And what I would suggest is. And, and this is regardless of where we, if, if this goes forward, whether, whether it's there and or we suggest that they be moved inside the gate. R- regardless, that would be one condition that I would like to see. I would also like to see a similar treatment across the back. In other words, you've got landscaping um, down one side. Mm-hmm. Why not just carry that right across the back? Um, across the, the back, which, uh, if this is North going up and right is East, do you mean along the East or? So it would be the South. Oh, the South. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of tree cover there and a berm. So yeah, of course we, yeah, we, we would do whatever it takes to, to screen it as much as possible. I think there's a lot of natural screen there as well, but we'd be happy sure. to keep adding. I mean, it, it, here's my concern. Most of what we've seen from the residents has to do with the visual. Mm -hmm. And I I think, and and again, to all of the committee members' uh, point, I too don't believe that that the opposition that we're feeling is -hmm. is based on the lack of information. Mm -hmm. I think if they had had information uh, if they knew that they weren't going to be two and a, 2.2 meters, you know, on a, on a concrete pad out in the open, um, and that they would be one meter or so in height, um, that could be properly screened from view, no matter how close they are to the road or how far they are to the road, um, I think would have gone a long way. And, and so that's why I would suggest screening on all four sides with a gate system where they need to be accessed. And I guess my other, the the question is, as you mentioned at the onset, Chris, 
uh, that the, gen the the collection of these things would be like basically a pickup truck. So when they come to pick it up, are they picking up the whole container and replacing it with two fresh containers? Or are they transferring what's in those bins into something else in a truck? Mm -hmm. Do you know? Uh, yes, it's a truck that comes in. Uh, it's a specialty truck with a crane. And it comes in. The idea is that it pulls right up to the side. Here, I might as well share my screen again. Um, yeah, it pulls in this way, stops here. Right. Uh, with a crane, it just it has a crane system where it captures like a sub layer in here because there's a bin within a bin here, right? You've got the wood mm -hmm. and uh, you know the hard shell enclosure. It grabs the bin and then it dumps it into the truck both ways, replaces the bin. <laughs> and then goes out. I'm not sure. It may every so often uh, replace the sub, the sub layer. It could replace the sub layer if it wants, if it, you know, is looking a little unsanitary there. Um, but that's the idea that it goes back. And I remember one, one reason why we didn't put it inside the gate, although we, we, you know, we could still consider that for sure, is the gates opening and then uh, the truck may be damaging it while it's it's unloading that way, like hitting a gate while it's reaching sure. over. But th 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 that's the way it works that way. And uh, yeah, if you'd like to right. screen all four sides, I, I think that's a great idea too. Yeah, I, that would that would be something that I would absolutely want to see um, from from my perspective as a condition. Um, and 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 if if we if we were to approve it. Um, in addition to, well, let's make sure we capture Steve because I, Steve's uh, conditions, but, uh, and if you don't have any problem with that, that, that works for me. But the other thing that I would do, uh, question to staff, Rosanna, if we want to put in those standard conditions that uh, I'm sure you're familiar with in the next application, uh, it, it basically is condition one, two, three, four, five, I guess, <laughs> and six. That's the condition on financial securities. I think we probably want to put that in because there's monitoring and what have you. Um, Would we in this meeting have to read those conditions out verbatim or can we just reference them? We can reference them through the chair and we can have Peter Fan, of course, I think he understands what has just been said. So uh, the, the decision will be clear. Okay. Uh, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, so Chris, I don't know, do you? Chris, do you have the uh, full staff report in front of you? Yes, I do. Can I refer you then to go to page 40? Uh, what is it? Page 41? Oh, the full staff report. Okay, I've got yeah. that on another. Uh, here, give me a sec. I do have it within reach. <clears throat> Yeah, as the committee is talking about it, I, I really want you to be clear and understand. Uh, David mentioned these standard conditions and standard processes that the town already has um, in hand. And, and I would take it and just drop it in verbatim. Uh, and just a nod, Steve, would you be okay with that in addition to the other conditions that you put in? Certainly, Mr. Chair, to answer your question, uh, no, I wouldn't. Um, and the reason I say that is that uh, the standard conditions um, say that it may be uh, may be required, and if the no, trees are shot, uh, we came to shot. Look well, 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 yeah, and and but <laughs> I, I think it needs it's, good, it's a good point, David, and it, it I, I think it it leaves it up to we've had this discussion before. It, it leaves it up to the determination of a future date whether the trees will be removed or or preserved, uh, removed under the tree compensation plan. And to me, 
that's that's we're talking too much of a variance um you know to be re removing mature trees you know so that there may be a gym and there may be and, and the owner may have you know the convenience of having mollocks at the front however if we can ensure that the mature trees all reasonable attempts are made to uh, maintain the trees and put that that specific mature trees will not be removed or damaged um then, then i'd be i'd be consistent uh, comfortable with it however um I, I would like to just very quickly take the opportunity to say that while the the other members were asking their questions i went back to the site plan and i, I i've revised my opinion here that i really i First of all, I think I do agree with Linda's comment that we, we should have seen where the existing driveway is and so that we have a reference point for the site plan, like for the site plan. And I started doing the, the, the math between the mollusks and the trees, and it, it really looks like adding up all of the measurements that are there, it looks like according to the site plan that there is 30 feet between where those four trees are roughly. 25 to 30 feet and where the mollusks would be. And we don't actually have a measurement to the road. So to be quite honest, me walking it, and, and once again, it was pacing it off. Those trees are only 25 to 30 feet from the road. And it's saying that the mollusks to the trees are gonna be 30 feet. And then according to this site plan, it looks like there's another 25 feet or so. If I'm using the scale and I've been measuring it, because the site plan doesn't actually measure to the road, looks like there's another 25 or 30 feet to the road. And based on me being there on site, that's just, that distance <laughs> is there. So my recommendation here tonight would be, I think that we would really benefit as a committee, I think the applicant would benefit asking for a deferral or taking a deferral, um, uh, getting a real site plan based on a survey or and, and complementing the measurements, taking the opportunity to see if they can um, work out the screening with the with the residents and come back with a, a validated uh, um, a site plan, uh, a, a complemented site plan, and potentially some agreement with the neighbors and, and some you know at least a better uh, agreement with the neighbors and if. You know, if it's not occupied right now, I don't know how that would another month or so would impact uh, uh, the development plans. But to me, as speaking as a member, I really don't, having walked the site, I'm not clear where these things are going and how close to the road they're going to be. And all of these concerns, if we're going to have bees circulating, circling and people walking by, I don't know if it's 10 feet from the road or 5 feet from the road or 30 feet from the road. Uh, but these measurements just don't make sense to me what I'm seeing today. So those would be my comments on what you raised uh, and, and, and uh, uh, the other aspects. I just, uh, just before David, uh, so Chris, I saw you did pull that up and uh, probably while we were chatting here, uh, those are standard conditions, uh, Chris, whenever we get into mm -hmm. situations as a general rule, uh, when works are involved on a site where trees um, particularly mature trees are involved. The condition you're looking at here is, is May at the discretion of, uh, of the town require these things. In your case, uh, that May would be shall. And, um, and, and that would have been a, a condition that I, in, in order for me to support it, th this ap particular application, that would have had to have been there. Um, but I, I let me ask you a question, Chris. None of this work would be done until the spring. Am I correct? Uh, yes, that would assume to be so because we'd be pouring concrete and um, yeah, it, it'd be done in the spring, ideally. Okay. So there really wouldn't be a down in this case of urgency um, in, in getting our decision this evening, if we should request, or if one of the members 
uh, when I did see deferral from Steve there, I saw Daniel's head shaking yes. I saw David's head shaking yes. Um, I think uh, I think Linda would like to see more information, and so would I. Um, mm -hmm. So, if if you wish, it would be my suggestion to you that rather mm -hmm. than proceed, the benefit of all of this is that you've had some input from a resident. Uh, you did indicate that you hadn't seen those uh, those letters and petition until earlier today. Mm -hmm. Give your give you give give yourself a chance to digest that, digest our comments and concerns, and then from a technical perspective, uh, and when I say technical, more site plan perspective, be able to confirm some of those distances so that we're more comfortable with what those actual physical distances are from the road. Um, and where those trees are, if all of the trees are in fact uh, on that drawing, which I, I kind of doubt um, from my own site visit, and, and get that updated, show where the existing driveway is, show where the proposed driveway is. I, I think all of that would really help your case. And then as well, um, regardless of where it is, from my perspective, I don't see any reason why you can't screen the whole thing. Yeah. So that that would that would be something from from my perspective that I would like to see and I think is easily doable. Um, and so on that basis, I'll just ask you, uh, and and on our the basis of our discussion, um, would you be prepared to request a deferral? Yes, I would. <laughs> we appreciate that. All right. So. Uh, is there a motion that can be brought forward by a member of the committee to uh, defer at the request of the applicant to a future meeting? I think this is, by the way, Chris, something that you can uh, address very quickly um, and, and make the next meeting um, of the committee. I would like to see it come back uh, to the committee as quickly as possible. Okay. Um, all right. And and I'll just this is pragmatic. This committee is is appointed by council. We have a new council. Um, for the sake of continuity, uh, this committee will be meeting in its current situ current status, current individuals on committee in February. There's a possibility that it'll be a new committee in March whereby some of the members of this committee may not be here. In fact, all of the members of this committee at, at council's discretion um, may appoint new people to the committee. And so the continuity would have to, there wouldn't be continuity potentially at, the, at this committee, the people that you're seeing today. Um, I, I, I'm hopefully that that's not the case, um, but you do have staff who have the continuity and would be bringing it back based on our comments. So. Um, but I would like to see it come back um, to this committee. Uh, so uh, is there a motion then uh, at the request of the applicant to defer? Uh, yes, uh, there's a mo motion to defer. I guess uh, one, one concern I might have about it is uh, I guess we would need to get some local surveying a little more accurately done and uh, perhaps an arborist report. Would you want that before the next meeting? No. It would be an, a commitment to undertake an arborist report. I think at this point, what we need is accuracy on what's on the ground, where the driveway is, where the driveway is going, and some physical distances mapped out on a drawing. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that's very reasonable. Uh, David? Uh, through the chair, uh, you uh, just want to mention that through the discussion, one other point which he would really trigger this for a deferral is the were discussions and we were, you know going with the, the uh, applicant in terms of changes to the design. Whenever there's a change, to give, there's a change to the design. It cha is changing of the drawing. We're talking about uh, you know, position, different position of the uh, of the gates, uh, pre preparing new drawings, uh, accurate drawings about landscaping. When it involves that automatically it's a default because we're not judging on what he, 
you have in front of you in terms of the drawings. So I just wanted to make sure so that this gives an opportunity to the applicant also to look at those uh, comments from the committee in terms of location of the beans, in terms of the location of the gate, though those suggestions like the Mr. Chair, you are talking about those other things you would put, whatever, in terms of the gate, in terms of something to hide the beans, all those, the, this is the opportunity for the client to make sure things are, you know, they're okay. Similar to the, the application we had before, we provided comments, they went back, they make, you know, good changes and so on. So what I'm saying is this gives the applicant also the opportunity to, you know, rectify the design, you know, the drawings, make sure they're okay, you know, whatever input we had from different members and also try to also make sure that the, the uh, residents around, they know what is happening because that was another concern. Out of all those 18, you were talking about the ISO, you know, and the show that they didn't know anything about, or maybe they knew, but not much about how you're going to put the beans behind the, you know, you're going to have landscaping buffer, uh, all that they didn't know. So also this gives you opportunity to talk to the residents and, and so on. I thought of yeah. just providing these comments. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yep. Per perfect. Yeah. Good, good, uh, good, good comment, uh, David. So, uh, Members of the committee, we have a request from the applicant to defer. Uh, Steve? Yes, uh, th thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair, I move that with respect to minor variance 2022-40, uh, 20, uh, uh, with, with respect to 3 Jarvis Avenue, um, that uh, at the request of, that we grant the request of the applicant, and uh, uh, I suggest that we defer this application to consideration at a future meeting to be determined uh, between the applicant and staff. Thank you very much. A seconder, please. Uh, Linda, uh, all in favor of the motion is presented. And that carries. Uh, thank you. Uh, Chris, uh, appreciate the, um, appreciate your position in making the request for deferral. I think it was a, 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 a good, uh, a good uh, position to take. Um, and I would uh, suggest that uh, as the members of the committee had suggested, take a little bit of time, perhaps a uh, good suggestion to speak to your neighbors. I think, I think that would clear a lot and it would certainly make our job a lot uh, easier um, at a future date to, uh, uh, to consider this uh, as well. Thank you, uh, Daniel. Did you I, was wanna... simply, I was simply going to suggest through the chair that you uh, provide a quick little apology to the gentleman on the phone as uh, well. That this was, is more than 15 thank minutes. Thank you. That was next on my, <laughs> I know he's still there. Uh, that's next on my, uh, on my to-do list. Thank you for reminding me, Daniel. Appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Martin, uh, I do believe that you are still online. And uh, you will note that uh, we have actually deferred a decision on the application made by your neighbor to a future meeting, uh, which means that uh, in all likelihood, we are going to be looking at hopefully uh, some changes that address as many of your concerns as possible. And I appreciate the time that you've taken, sir, to uh, stay with us. Um, I think it's good that there is somebody from the neighborhood, if you are still there listening, because uh, you'll be able to um, hopefully uh, meet with the owner, uh, your neighbor, and uh, possibly some of your, your other neighbors uh, in the immediate area to um, provide some input um, on this application when it does come back. So I'll bid both of you a good evening, and uh, thank you for being with us, both of you. Thank you, everybody. I'll move uh, on to the next item on the agenda. Uh, which is minor variance application MV 2022-49, 86 Tyler Street. Um, in this application, the applicant is requesting relief from the requirements of the town's comprehensive zoning bylaw 6000-17 amend, as amended to allow a proposed one-story garage addition and a one-story rear addition the proposed garage addition is 18.8 square meters or 202 square feet 
And the rear addition is 74.5 square meters or 802 square feet, with the existing dwelling being 291.8 square meters or 3,141 square feet on a 300, uh, sorry, 973.1 meter square meter, uh, that being uh, 10,474 square foot lot. The proposed uh, relief is being requested. A, uh, section 7.2 of the zoning bylaw restricts lot coverage to a maximum of 35%. The applicant is proposing a one-story garage addition and a one-story rear addition, which will result in a total lot coverage of 39.6%, thereby requiring a variance of 4.6%. Uh, the applicant's stated reason for not complying with the zoning bylaw uh, is as follows. The garage addition provides additional length for existing parking spaces due to the larger vehicles and provides additional storage to the already existing shallow garage. Uh, the covered front porch provides additional covered area from the elements when entering the house and enhances curb appeal. Uh, the three season uh, room addition provides additional outdoor living space uh, while being protected from the elements. Uh, not sure if we would categorize that as outdoor living space based on the drawings. However, uh, planning comments are as follows. With regards to the general meeting of the uh, general intent of the official plan, uh, the official plan states that new development abutting existing residential development shall be sympathetic to the form and character of the existing development with regards to building scale and urban design. The proposed features, uh, the proposal features high quality design and material such uh, that there will be no negative impacts on the streetscape or the character of the area. The additional garage space also ensures that cars will not be parked on the road and are also out of sight from the public realm. The front uh, property features mature trees and landscaping, which will be retained as well. Therefore, staff are of the opinion that the general intent of the official plan is maintained. With regards to the general intent of the zoning bylaw, staff are of the opinion that the requested variance is keeping is in keeping with the intent of the zoning bylaw and provides for privacy, spacing between the dwellings and appropriate drainage of the lands. With regards to uh, the variance being considered desirable for the appropriate development of the, of the land, staff are of the opinion that the garage addition and the rear addition will not negatively impact the existing neighborhood character. Staff are of the opinion that the requested variance is desirable for uh, the appropriate development of the land. With regards to the variance being considered minor in nature, the garage addition um, and the rear addition are considered moderate in scale and the requested variance is not anticipated to result in negative impacts uh, to the neighborhood or abutting property. Uh, therefore, staff are of the opinion that the requested variance is minor in nature. Uh, additional comments. And while my screen is frozen here. Um, okay. So, uh, building division um, and engineering division. Sorry, my screen's been sitting dormant for too long. Oh, here we go. Okay. Uh, building division on November the 17th, 
2022, a preliminary zoning review was completed. Engineering division, uh, no comments or concerns. Operational services parks, the application does not uh, reference impact to existing trees. However, there are trees situated on the subject property and adjacent property that may require protection uh, due to um, construction uh, and potential impacts related to excavation. Access to the rear yard appears very limited. Uh, in view of the above, park staff recommend that the committee impose conditions if this application is approved in accordance with Appendix A. Operational services, no comments received. Central York Fire Services, no comments received. Um, uh, LSRCA, no comments, uh, as this property is located outside the areas regulated by LSRCA. York Region uh, completed its review and has no comment. Electra uh, Utility, um, no objections to its approval. Uh, there were no written uh, comments uh, received by staff at the uh, time of the writing of the report. And I do not believe we have uh, any delegations this evening either. And no additional comments are re received. Um, so uh, staff recommend approval of the requested variant subject to the conditions as outlined in Appendix A. And there are a number of them, including those that we referred to in the previous um, in the previous application. So I'll look to the applicant um, for any comments or presentation. I believe uh, we have uh, for this application is it Dana Evans and Mackenzie uh, Rintz uh, with us this evening, and I'll welcome you to the meeting. And I'll thank you for your patience. <laughs> uh, hello, Mr. Chair and Committee. My name is Mackenzie Rintz. I am from 209 Design. We're located at 15905 Side Road 17 in Sunderland, Ontario. And I'm here representing our clients, Bill and Tina, for property 86 Tyler Street. Welcome. Thank you. So do you wish to make a presentation this evening? Um, not at this point. I believe you've covered everything. Um, one, Actually, one point I would like to make is uh, one of the points was about the front door covering. Um, at, when we have originally applied for the minor variance, it was we had the understanding that it would count towards the property coverage. We were then informed afterwards that it would not. Um, that point was just left on just for clarification for the committee. Thank you. All right, terrific, thank you. Uh, there not being anyone uh, from the public uh, with us this evening who wishes to address the committee, I'll look to the committee then for any comments or questions to the applicant. David. And your mic is muted, uh, David, so if you can unmute. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Uh, so uh, I don't have any questions. That's why I raised my hand face so that we can you know, finish that. <laughs> I just have a comment. So my comment is the, for the, uh, I'm hoping the client has read all the conditions. So this condition number, I'll say number two, uh, which he says the, uh, it starts with the owner may be required to provide. I would suggest if we're going to approve this, that should say the owner shall provide an evaluation report, uh, which will be prepared by an arborist and so on, because that is important. Uh, you're going to evaluate all the trees, knowing the species, do inventory, knowing which ones you're going to protect, which ones are going to be removed, and you know coming up with the compensation plan, which is again coming on uh, 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 condition number four. So for condition number two, I just ask if we put SHA, so that the, because that is required. Um, that's it. For number four, it it it, it, it I can I can say. You can still say may be required because based on the evaluation report may not may not be any need of doing any compensation. So you see, okay to say maybe, 
uh, may be you know, required to provide a, a, a tree compensation, depending on the, the inventory, depending on evaluation report. So that's the, my only comment, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Just for number two, to put Shah, uh, provide an evaluation report. Thank you. Uh, thank you, David. Um, other members of the committee? Uh, Linda, go ahead. I won't make you wait this time. Thank you through the chair. I'm used to going last, it's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Um, where was I now? Okay, no. Um, yeah, I, I saw the property and I, I think it'll be a nice addition. I was a little concerned about the, the four season room addition what seemed to be very close from what I could um, measure out there today was gonna to be very, very close to the pool. Um, I was thinking of, um, you know, it's right by where the stairs would be. It is covered up, but I'm assuming there's not much walking between the stairs at the top of the pool and the end of the uh, four season. I was concerned about that for safety reasons, mostly. You know, if someone would walk by and slip into the pool or something, that that to me was, but I, I might have it off, but that's what it looked like to me. Could be a concern there um, with that. And uh, yeah, that was the only thing I really noticed other than it was a beautiful deck. It's too bad they got to get rid of it. <laughs> it's lovely. But yeah, that was one of my questions or concerns. How close is it coming to the end of the stairway? I couldn't quite decipher. It says six feet there, but I think it's less. Um, so if I may, so the stairs would be approximately seven feet away from the edge of the one side of the pool. And then it would be closer to eight feet from the three season sunroom and the stair entrance of the pool. So there would be still adequate room for two people to pass by the pool quite safely. Okay. Um, on the site plan, um, it says approximate pool location and there's a black dashed line around it. And that's actually a notation for a four foot setback, which is what's required. You're not allowed building for closer than four feet. So that was to indicate a four foot setback as just a kind of like a mental note for everyone to, to be aware of. Perfect. Okay. Thank you for that. Appreciate yeah. I it. think what's, what's throwing, I think it threw me off as well, but um, I'm familiar. Um, the pool cover actually uh, goes well beyond the outside limit of, of the pool um, in some case, like uh, in my son's, uh, my son's case, it's almost four feet That's um, what because you've got the, the material and then you've got the tension and it's, it's quite, quite a bit larger than the pool. So when I saw that, I sort of did a double take two and then I realized, Hey, wait a minute, this is, um, this is like my son's pool. So yeah, I, I agree. Okay, um, thank you. And I don't have a pool. That's why I missed that. Damn. <laughs> uh, I think I saw uh, Steve. I thought I saw your hand up. Uh, any comments or questions? Yes, thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I, I also visited the site. Um, uh, fantastic property. Um, uh, I, I don't have any objection to this application. Uh, one of the things that... Uh, I typically look for, especially when there's an extension on the front of the property, is the property going to jump, jut out, um, you know, are all the properties built, even though there isn't a front yard setback, uh, uh, encroachment on front yard setback, I, I typically look to see if it's going to stand out, if, if, the, if there's an addition on the front. Um, uh, I did note that on that street, um, there, there, it, first of all, the, pro the, the existing house is quite a bit set back. Uh, and in fact, is set back further than some of the other properties. So even with the extension, mm -hmm. it's going to be out of place. And there really isn't, uh, all of the properties haven't been uh, built uh, with the same setback from the street. So um, that, that clearly wasn't a concern. Um, the rear property, I, I do echo uh, uh, my fellow members' remarks. It's beautiful deck that's there, but uh, I do understand wanting to use that, uh, have that view uh, three seasons and, uh, um, so, um, yeah, this makes sense to me. Um, I, I do think the staff have raised a good point, uh, to construct mm -hmm. the rear of the yard and get heavy, uh, heavy equipment back there is going to be a challenge. Um, you know, and I think they've got some good conditions in there. So, um, 
at the end of the day, I'm, I'm very comfortable with this application. And uh, I think all as aspects have been considered. Thank you, Steve. Uh, any uh, other comments or questions, uh, Daniel? I'll, I'll just make a comment. I, I'd like to uh, state that it's a beautiful property and uh, a beautiful home. And, and I actually very much support the three season room addition. I think it's quite nice. And, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. with Linda's comments, uh, does alleviate that, that concern uh, that I, I, that we all seem to share my only, um, um, the only sad thing to me, and it's more of just a, a cranky old man than, uh, than an <laughs> objection uh, is just, I, I love um, it. It looks fairly straight. I know there is already a, a between the garage and the and the, the, the those, those windows is still a little bit, but now you're moving that garage forward, which makes the garage a little bit closer to the street and a little bit more what you see. Um, I'm not in favor of that, but that's just my preference. I'm just um, it's just sad, but I can understand wanting that extra space, wanting that um, uh, yeah, wanting that extra space. I understand it's just too bad that that's the way it has to be, but it is what it is. And it's not going to be, it's not going to cause me an objection of any kind. It's just um, sad that, um, that, that you'll lose that beautiful straight, semi-straight uh, face that you have right now. But yeah, thank you. David? Uh <clears throat> Uh, I, I, I already commented at the beginning, so I don't have any more comments. Okay. No, I wasn't sure. Yeah. Thank uh, you. It looked like you were. I was, I was the first to... one. I was the first one. I, I know, I, but it looked like you were getting ready to say something there. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I had a, a, a good look at, at the property as well. And, um, you know, I've, I've sat on this committee for eight years and eight years ago, one of the first applications that I looked at was on Tyler. And at that time, it was probably one of the first or second on that street. And I remember a number of residents objected that we were allowing the character of that street to change dramatically. And oddly enough, the subject property is designated stable, stable, stable neighborhoods, pardon me. And had it been the first on the street, I would have probably had a very different outlook towards the application than I do today. Because I think what you're about to do is probably more in keeping with what's there today, generally speaking, than what was there eight years ago. <clears throat> This is one of those areas of the town where I think, I believe <clears throat> um, that this type of development, redevelopment, um, you know, would occur. And from a planning perspective, I, I understand it. Uh, in this particular area, it, it does make sense. The lots are much bigger. The diversity of architecture is there. Um, there is uh, uh, a great deal, in my opinion, from, from an aesthetic point of view, um, a lot of diversity in the architecture. And I think that helps. Um, the existing home from the street is actually a very nice home. Uh, the stonework across the front of, of that, I, I, you know, as I was walking up, for a second, I, th I thought, oh, they're just gonna take the stone off the front of this building, extend the garage and put the stone right back on. And, and that to me, um, you know, it, it wouldn't surprise me that, that that might happen. I'm not exactly sure from the elevations that I've seen if that's the case, but my point is what is being shown is tasteful. Um, I was a little bit, I have to admit, um, and it's got nothing to do with lot coverage. But when I look down the side of the building, on both sides of the building, you're almost 100 feet long 
a hundred feet. In fact, you may be over a hundred feet on one side. That is that is a long straight wall. If the homes on either side of you hadn't done what they had done, I would have almost expected somebody to object because that that addition, that three season room across the back of the property to the house on the east, uh, sorry, west side projects that whole distance is, is projected beyond the that house. And it's a sizable addition. And I kind of, at the beginning, when I was reading the brief, I, I sort of thought, this isn't a three season room. It's an addition. It's not an outdoor space. It's an indoor space. Um, the only reason I would refer to it as a three season room is maybe because of the expanse of the window, heating it might be a little bit of a challenge for some parts of the winter, um, but that's neither here nor there. But it is not an outdoor space. It's, it's an indoor space for sure. Regardless of that, I, I think it still remains in keeping with, with that neighborhood and the character of the neighborhood. Um, I don't see any negative uh, impact to the neighborhood. Um, and I think you've done a, a, a rather good job in dealing with the architecture. I think you're going to have some problems getting equipment back there. So I definitely would support uh, my colleague's suggestion that we change it from shall, uh, from may require an arborist report to shall. More because of your neighbor's trees, and especially to the to to the east, there are some lovely trees there. I noticed the guys were just finishing a new fence, which I assume is going to stay. Um, but um, I, I certainly think you've done a very good job here. I, I don't uh, I don't see any any planning concerns, so I'm certainly going to be supporting it. Um, so those are just my comments, and I'll look to then the committee for a motion on this application. Linda. Thank you, and through the chair, I move to approve MV2022, um, 86 Tyler Street, be approved for minor variances as indicated in the staff report subject to the conditions in Appendix A and tree protection. Also with the amendment from, um, from May to shall in number two on appendix A. Uh, did I get that? Yes, you did. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Seconder on uh, the motion, please. David, thank you very much. Calling the question, all in favor. Carries unanimously. So thank you very much, uh, Mackenzie, for being with us this evening. And thank you for your patience uh, in sticking with us uh, from uh, beginning to the end of the meeting. Thank um, you very but, much. Uh, your variance has uh, uh, been approved by the committee. So uh, I'll bid you a, a, a very good evening and uh, have you a year. Too. Thank you. You too. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, members of the committee, that completes the applications before us this evening. Um, so with that, I will, um, under new business, if you will indulge me, uh, there has been, and you heard me refer to it in uh, not this application, but in the previous application um, about uh, bringing that item back so that you are all aware uh, I had a discussion with Linda Bottas uh, with regards to where we stand as a committee and timing so my understanding from uh, staff is uh, recruitment for uh, this committee and others uh, at the town of Aurora uh, will begin February 1st and that would follow uh, the uh, council, town council, following the January 31st council meeting, adopting uh, the um, 
changes to and processes involving the uh, committees of council uh, and a report going uh, to the council on January the 17th. Um, so if that report is, is approved and uh, following a council's uh, meeting on the 31st, uh, that would then trigger uh, applications or expressions of interest from the public on these uh, committees February the 1st. Uh, the chances are that uh, then council would be appointing uh, members uh, for uh, the March meeting. So our meeting in February would com be comprised of our current group. And in March, uh, the new uh, committee, uh, our committee would be, uh, would be coming forward. So that's my understanding at this point. Um, and I have a link that will uh, allow me to share with you and, and Linda, by the way, uh, for that matter, she could do the same, but I'll send it to you. Um, what that process looks like, what the drafts of uh, uh, the changes are for uh, the operation of uh, all of the committees and, and what changes are coming. Um, as you all know, we all sit on three committees. Um, and if the report that's going forward is approved and then adopted by council, uh, the Committee of Adjustment will be a standalone committee. The Appeals Committee and Property Standards um, will then be a separate committee. Um, so I guess that's something uh, that if any of us are considering either the Committee of Adjustment or, or the, either of those other two committees uh, to take into consideration which uh, ones you might be preference to. Um, but uh, having said that, we do have an appeal hearing that's coming up for our committee on January the 26th, I believe. And then we have our regular meeting of this group again in February. So we will see all of you, hopefully, um, again later this month and then in February and then possibly beyond. So that's my understanding of where we stand as a group. and. Um, and that's all I've got under new business for, uh, from my perspective. And Linda, if you, are you still online? Yes, I am. So did I capture that correctly? Yes, you did. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, any other new business from anybody else on the committee? We all good? So I will look then to the committee for a motion to adjourn. Uh, David. <laughs> he doesn't want us to hear it. <laughs> David, you're muted. <laughs> I know, sorry. To the chair, I move that this meeting tonight be adjourned. Thank you. And I'll call the question all in favor. And we are adjourned. Thank you very much.